presentation of the Big East Conference Television Network. The Rutgers Scarlet Knights need a big win on the road today under their coach, Doug Graber. The Knights are 4-19 away from New Jersey, 1-6 in conference road games in his four-plus seasons. Ray Lucas, their quarterback, must establish himself as a big winner in a big spot to improve Rutgers' 1-2 conference record. More hookups with Reggie Funderburg will help his cause. The BC Eagles have broken into the top 25 with three straight wins. So far, Dan Henning's enjoying his return to the college campus after 20 years, and beating Notre Dame helps. Henning's quarterback, Mark Hartzell, coming off a hand injury, has been sharp, hitting 60% of his passes, leading a very explosive BC passing attack. Nope, not the Weather Channel, but be advised there's always a thunder and lightning watch when you play Rutgers. Bruce Presley, number 44, is the thunder, the power averaging four and a half yards per carry. The speed and lightning comes from Terrell Willis, number 31. They make one of the best running back tandems in college football. No slick nicknames for BC's running attack, but they have special talents in Justice Smith, number 42. He can hurt you anywhere on the field, 4-6. And David Green, number 30, the leading rusher with 462 yards in this score against the Irish. Coming up from Alumni Stadium in Chestnut Hill, Mass., it's the 22nd-ranked BC Eagles against the Rutgers Scarlet Knights and the Big East Football Conference Game of the Week. It's the Big East Football Conference Game of the Week. Today's matchup features the Rutgers Scarlet Knights taking on the 22nd ranked Boston College Eagles. Cloudy day here at Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. Dave Sims along with Dave Jennings. Good to have you with us. We're a couple of teams that are playing some pretty good football. BC's won three straight. Rutgers has won two straight. And the key for Rutgers is always, Dave Jennings, they've got to get the running game going with Presley and Willis. Well, last week they both went over 100 yards, and it's important for their success that they do well today. But they haven't scored a touchdown in the last three games. That is a disturbing note for the Rutgers ball club. Meanwhile, this offensive line, they've got to come up big today. Their responsibility makes a room. It all starts up front, Ken Damon on the left side. He's going against Mamula. They have a very tough front seven they'll be facing. All right, some high anxiety on the defensive side for Rutgers. Bob Sneed, an outstanding defensive end, is ailing just a little bit today. Hurt his uh, elbow last week, and he will not start, but he should play, and they'll see how it goes during the course of the game, but he is their best defensive lineman. And he can uh, really stuff the run. That's a good play a few weeks ago in the game against Miami. Big responsibility for the defensive secondary, Curtis Tribbett, Mark Washington. They're going to have to do a good job against this Boston College passing attack. Well, Washington, you can see him here highlighted, had two picks last week to seal the win. You'll see him just read the quarterback's eyes here, step in front, and there it is. Big plays last week, he had two picks, not bad. Now, Dave Jennings, when we look at Boston College and think about two tight ends, Dan Henning loves to have the jumbo look. He's got a couple of good ones in Pete Mitchell and Gordon Laro. Yeah, he's got the receiving tight end in Mitchell, and then Laro, who is the H-back. You always see an H-back in Dan Henning's offense. See him smiling here? I think he caught a pass in warm-ups, but he's a blocker. And the thing that's scary about Gordon Laro, he can catch the ball. We've seen him get deep in the seam a few times this season. Now, their front seven for Boston College, outstanding. Some people put them up there in the same page with the Miami Hurricanes, and that is a big ring. Very aggressive. They get after you. They don't really play the run as much as they want to get after the quarterback. Mamula's got the eight sacks, and Boyd leading the team in, ta in tackles. Stephen Boyd, outstanding. And Mike Mamula has just been a terror. Here he is in, in shadowed here, and he really puts tremendous pressure on you. They put him outside in the 4-3 defense, and he's got some speed to get there. That he does. Number 59, Mike Mamula for the BC Eagles. Now, the Eagles have won three of these last four meetings against Rutgers. Spirited contest last year, 31-21 at Giant Stadium. More of same as expected today. Glad you're with us, and we're set to kick things off. You stick around. We'll be back after these words from our local stations. nineteen ninety four big east football brought to you by motorola pagers for the messages you can't afford to miss and by your local lincoln mercury dealer position your company as a leader in the poultry industry Get here asap with a new memo express pager from motorola you receive actual text messages instantly look you're on track unlike those clowns yesterday who brought in some guy in a chicken suit <laughs> Chicken suit. Lose a chicken. <laughs> 
Introducing the Memo Express Pager from Motorola for the messages you can't afford to miss. The Memo Express Pager from Motorola. Now available at all mobile media locations. I sat my son down, explained it to him. Simple, uncomplicated. Uh, uh. I didn't know what he was talking about. But he was nervous and sweating. If you need help talking to your kids about drugs, call for this free book. Alumni Stadium at Chestnut Hill, Mass., the site for today's game at the Big East Conference. Rutgers taking on the Boston College Eagles. Weather conditions, nice breeze here, 63 degrees, and uh, the forecast cloudy. Rain is not expected, although it looks like the clouds could open up at any moment. Time now for Dave Jennings' Rolling Rock Chalk Talk. Yeah, for Rutgers, the first thing they have to do on offense, negate BC's front seven. They're very aggressive. Got to keep them back on the heels. You can do that by running and also go with that play action. The second thing, Lucas, the quarterback, has to perform. Last week against Cincinnati, two interceptions. He was not pleased. Third thing, and this is my area, they've got to find a punter. Last week, Sloven had a 12-yarder. Shermetta had an 18-yarder, and they're very concerned about that. And going over to Boston College, one thing that Dan Henning likes to do, ball control. He wants to keep the ball, keep it away from the other team. Against Notre Dame, they had the ball for 38 minutes. Next, they want to be three and out on defense. They don't want Lucas, Presley, and Willis to get going because the more they get going, the better they are. And the third thing is pressure Lucas. They don't want him to get outside. He's a dangerous guy. He can beat you with his feet. We got the number 13 handy, ready to go down, <laughs> take, some, take some snaps. No eligibility left. <laughs> Doug Graber. Getting ready here, 50 years old, his record 24 and 27 at Rutgers. We'll be matching wits with this man, Dan Henning, 52 years old, out of the Bronx, New York. Three and two here at Boston College. And the officials, John Sophie, Carl Crawley, John McGrath, Nick Trainer, Gene Steratore, Carter Lohr, and Jim Anderson. Rutgers won the toss and deferred. And that note is very, very interesting from the Rutgers standpoint. Boston College Eagles, second year in a row, they've opened the season with two straight losses and they've come on strong again. Joe Kukowski out of Trenton, New Jersey, will kick off for the Scarlet Knights. And as you said, Rutgers won the toss, did defer. You see that a lot in college football. Teams like to get their defense out on the field first. They feel they can set the tone better if they're on defense. Tony Ransom and Kenyatta Watson deep for Boston College. And we're happy to have you with us. So our Big East football game is underway. A high short kick, Kenyatta Watson from the six. Got a wedge that opened up to the sideline and knocked down at the 29-yard line by number 43. That's Brian Sheridan with some help from Thomas Kelly. Mark Hartzell leads the BC offense's numbers to this point. The TD interception ratio wants to improve on that. Dan Ariskovich, who's a talented vocalist and a pretty good tackle at 6'3", 290, out of Sewickley, Pennsylvania, leads that offensive line. And Greg Rice, the number two receiver, he's got a touchdown. The big one, a 74-yarder at Michigan. And the BC Eagles take over at their own 30-yard line. You see a lot of movement this afternoon. Here's Mitchell. Green, the setback, and he gets the call. To the corner, big yardage into the secondary. Good for first down to the 41-yard line, brought down by Thomas Kelly, number 21. You always see movement, always see movement on the Boston College offense. This is Mitchell playing the H-back, leading up as Laurel. Now, Catano gets in, doesn't make the play. Another broken tackle here, and Green gets a nice, nice 10-yard gain on first down. David Green averaging 4.7 yards per carry, almost 100 yards per game at 92-4. Straight ahead, Green finds a couple of yards. Kyle made the tackle with Shane Spells. He is taking Bob Sneathan's place here today. Shane Spells, number 97. There's Alcides Catano at a big interception against West Virginia. He's an outstanding linebacker. And Derek Ward's going to have some big responsibilities. Great athlete, terrific speed. And there's Spells again. We expect to see Sneathan, but not for a little while anyway. Second down and seven for the Eagles. Sprint draw action to Green. Written down by number 91. That's Keith Bryant for Rutgers. Picks up about three. 
you know, Boston College will pretty much tell you where they are running the ball. Just follow the movement guy, the tight ends, and it's either going to be Laurel or Mitchell. And then if they can get that running game going nicely, then it sets up the other stuff, the play action, and it's, it can be very effective. The thing that's scary, too, is that they counter off of that so well. Ed Henning want to play a lot of ball control this afternoon. Greg Grace to the bottom of your screen on this third and five. Mitchell in motion. Parks with the first pass attempt. Got a man short. Laro right at the first down. Let's see where the mark will be. And it looks like they're going to give it to him. Just across the 50. First down for Boston College. Of course, I told you at the top of the show that he is the blocking tight end. Now watch him. He just releases right down the seam. He looks like he's going to block, but now he just releases, stops in front of the safety, wide open. Good catch. First down. Eighth catch of the season for Gordon Laro. Transfer from the University of Michigan. Mitchell in motion, some defensive movement. Green pops it to the outside. Turns it up and met by Catano at the Rutgers 45. What a collision that was. But I think they have spells for being offside. He jumped the count and couldn't get back, so they'll have him for being offside. And I'm sure that BC will accept the penalty. Again, spells in for Sneven. Probably got a little adrenaline going his first start this year. He's bad. Senior out of New Brunswick High School in New Brunswick, New Jersey. 6'4", 240. Filling some big shoes. Offsides, defense, penalties accepted. It'll be first down and five. Uh, the BC Eagles moving now at the Rutgers 44. It's the type of game that BC likes. Keep grinding it out, run the ball. Ball control, time of the clock. Boston College, we talk about time, Dave, averaging almost 34 minutes per ball game. Green straight up the middle, a couple of yards. Rashawn Giddings, number 57. Shane Spells are there for Rutgers. Timmy O'Brien's a center. He wears number 54 right in the middle of the screen. They're going to run right behind him. He's got the nose tackle on him. He just plays him off. <laughs> Running back chooses right behind him. That's Green. Good three, two, three yard gain on that first and five. Tim O'Brien out of Hanson, Mass. So far, BC's run it four times and thrown one pass. That a completion of Laro. There's Mitchell, great receiver. Green, can he get outside? No, he can't. Good play by Rasan Giddings, the middle linebacker for the Scarlet Knights. That'll take it back to the 44 yard line. Loss of two. Now keep an eye on Mitchell, he's number 82. He goes in motion, now he comes back. Now watch him hook spells, does a nice job here hooking the defensive end, but then Giddings comes in with a nice shoestring tackle. Sean Giddings out of Montreal, Quebec, Canada. The last time they went to Laro on this third down play, keep an eye on him. From the 44 of Rutgers, Hartzell, Justice Smith, he didn't get it. Rutgers meets the challenge. Number 43, Brian Sheridan, among those there, along with Alcides Catano. You know, I've seen Catano in a couple games this year. I'm very impressed by him, and he has forced a punt by Boston College. Balls to the 42-yard line, and Doug Graber's choice of deferring pays off. Yep. Beckley into punt. He is one of the best punters, not only in the Big East, but in the nation. Feels that short hop. But way too much of that one. Terrence Wiggins was down there. Make that Daryl Porter down there trying to get it. Punt a little bit too much by Jeff Beckley. So Rutgers will take over at its own 20-yard line. We'll be back to Alumni Stadium after we pause for these messages. Today's Big East football telecast is brought to you in part by Rolling Rock Premium Beer. From the Mountain Springs to you, same as it ever was. And by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? All of us are driven by something different. And yet millions of people have found that no matter what road life takes them down, they enjoy the ride more in a Ford car or truck. 
Enjoy the new ideas and craftsmanship. Appreciate the value. With Ford Taurus, America's best-selling car, F-Series, America's best-selling truck, and five of the country's ten best-sellers made by Ford, it seems as if a lot of people have driven a Ford lately. Rutgers offense about to take over as the defensive unit got the job done, holding Boston College without a score. Ray Lucas, his numbers on the season, coming off a 13 for 25, two touchdown, one pick performance against Cincinnati. Robert Barr, number 70. He is large at 6'5", 315. They call him a big puppy. Hasn't even learned how good he can be. And Reggie Funderburg, leading receiver with 35 catches and six touchdowns. And he's tied with Rasan Vanterpool for leading catches per game category. Even Harper in motion. Lucas to throw under pressure. He's flushed out to the 25 and goes down at about the 27. So Dave Jennings, that's not one of the things that uh, the BC folks want to see. They don't want to see him spreading out too much because he's dangerous. Well, the big matchup, of course, is Damon on the left side against Mamula. He gets his hand up in the face mask. No penalty called here, but this is one thing they don't want to happen. That's BC's defense. Let Lucas get out there because he gets seven yards on first down. Well, that was a healthy hold there by Ken Damon. That mat that'll intensify that matchup as if it needed any more. Second three for the 27. Lucas, quick drop, throw, drop. Thunderbird tried to chest catch it, not hand catch it, paid for it. Boy, that ball had a lot of heat on it from Ray Lucas. BC's defense led by Stephen Boyd, the leading tackler in the Big East last year, number two right now, to Ray Lewis of Miami. And Daryl Porter, an outstanding man in the secondary, took over for Joe Camara, who left the team after the Michigan game. Porter's had a real good season out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. 33 for the Scarlet Knights. Second in the Big East in that category, getting it done on third down. Lucas to Presley, met by Boyd, no first down. Stephen Boyd's the linebacker in the middle, and one thing that, that Rutgers has done here, they passed on running downs and run on passing downs. But watch Boyd right in the middle. He sees the draw, plays off the block, plays off a block here, the fullback, and pulls down Presley. So now into the game, and again, this is something that's very important for Rutgers, get a good punting game. He's only standing back about 12 yards. That is Slovin. Jared Slovin averaging 35 yards per kick and a high fair catch is caught. Called for at the 30-yard line by Kenyatta Watson. Good height on that kick. Nothing wrong with that kick. 39 yards on the punt. BC will take over for the second time. No score. 9.25 to go in the first period. We'll be back to Alumni Stadium after we pause for these words from our local stations. After Dave my office, I need a place where I can become civilized. And nobody can touch me when I'm in a Lincoln Town Car. In fact, the town car is so comfortable, I feel like taking a road trip for a little rematch. The new Lincoln Town Car Touring Edition features an all-new interior loaded with personal touches and $1,100 in savings, only at your tri-state Lincoln dealer. Position your company as a leader in the poultry industry here ASAP. With a new Memo Express pager from Motorola, you receive actual text messages instantly. Look, you're on track. Unlike those clowns yesterday who brought in some guy in a chicken suit. <laughs> chicken suit. Lose a chicken. Introducing the Memo Express pager from Motorola for the messages you can't afford to miss. The Memo Express pager from Motorola, now available at PC Richard & Son. Get a rugged Mazda Navajo, an all-new Mazda truck, or a Mazda MPV, all with a basic warranty unsurpassed in their class. And if you're in the mood for value, 
the time to see your Mazda dealer is now. We make the exceptional affordable. Get cash back or 1.9% financing now. Dave Sims and Dave Jennings with you on the Big East Football Conference Game of the Week. Boston College against Rutgers, and this is the second possession by the Eagles. Drove down to the Rutgers 42 and then punted. And then Rutgers did a three and out just with Dan Henning once from his defensive unit. Exactly. He, he, he told us yesterday the longer that his defense is on the field, the more time that the other team has a chance to find the weaknesses in it. The Eagles kept it on the ground mostly for that first possession. What they do this time around from the 32. Hartzell on the draw. Justice Smith, huge hole to the 42-yard line. Brought down by Rasan Giddings, number 57. That's close to first down yardage for Boston College. Keep an eye on the middle linebacker. That's number 57, Giddings. He's right in the middle. He's the guy who should be making a lot of the tackles. He gets blocked there by Nori, but then chases down a ball carrier, unfortunately too far downfield. Now see if we can keep 98 Laura. Watch this block right there, 98 on Catano. Justice Smith, tremendous speed. Got three touchdowns on the season. A little counteraction, not much doing there. Good play by Brian Sheridan, number 43, and number 91, Keith Bryant. And did you notice that Rutgers brought up about eight guys in the box, and that's something that uh, Dan Henning and his coaching staff will watch. Because of the running game, bringing more guys up, then the play action starts to work. Lose the yard on that play. It'll be second and 11 from the 42. BC so far has run it eight times, one pass. Greg Grace to the bottom of your screen. There's Mitchell. Hartzell looking. Out pattern. Mitchell, sure hands, catches, and fights his way to the 50 yard line. Coverage by number 28, Derek Ward. Other action around the Big East just underway. Miami at West Virginia. That will be a spirited game. Pittsburgh gave up 63 to Virginia Tech. They're down in Blacksburg. 63 last year, of course, and then a late start. Ron Dickerson's Owls hosting Paul Pasqualoni, Syracuse Orangeman. Now on this third down play, they brought out Laro and brought in a third wide receiver. So they go with the three wides on this third down set. Cannon to the bottom of your screen. Grace to the top. And that's Kenyatta Watson in motion. Hartzell to throw, got good protection. Underneath, Boston, first down, Boston College. Knocked down at the 43-yard line. Catano, number 80, put a lick on him. Yep, they go with the pass. Rutgers only rush four, so excellent protection. And you saw Watson go in motion, and then he just curled underneath. And look at this, perfect protection, just finds him there for the first down. You can see the setup coming, Dave. Yep. For the long one. You got the running game going. Exactly. They haven't even started the counters yet, and then nickeling and diming them with the short passes. Hartzell, three for three, 21 yards. From the 43. Oh, good pop. Catano, a standoff against Justice Smith. Strong, active linebacker. Had some help from Shane Spells, but Catano out of Elizabeth. High school in Elizabeth, New Jersey, with a good one here. Yeah, Kendall did not get him, and Catano comes in with a beautiful, beautiful tackle. No gain. Give it a short one. Let's call it a short one. <laughs> Second down at nine. Mitchell in motion again. Hartzell oh, oh, oh. throwing. Mitchell up right there with the catch. First down and a lot more. Breaks a tackle inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. First down, Eagles. Derek Ward finally brought him down with help from Thomas Kelly. That's a 23-yard pickup by the All-American Pete Mitchell. Yeah, we talked about it. Now, Sneathan is now in the game for Rutgers, but good blocking up front. Plenty of time to throw, and there's Mitchell down the seam. That's the tight end's favorite route. Just get in between the safeties and... Tell you, you can't let this guy beat you, though, because he is their main receiver. Well, Pete Mitchell came in with 21 catches. Adding to that number today with two more. He's got 23 in the season. From the 19, Justice Smith. Nice stutter step. How about the block on Laurel? Laurel had an absolute pancake on Catano. He buried him. Gordon Laurel, number 98. Well, you work with a former H-back of Dan Henning, Doc Walker. 
this is just an unbelievable performance here on this block. Top of your screen right there. He's got him. He has him locked up nicely and say goodbye. But the other guys come in, do a good job on first down, limited to a one and a half yard gain. Ball's at the 17 yard line for Boston College. Black running at 535. No score here in the first period. Justice Smith following Laura. Cut it off. Nicely done. He's not down yet. Finally stopped by number 21, Thomas Kelly. You know, we talk about the H-back and Dan Henning's offense. Well, the next thing you see is the counter. We haven't seen it today, but that's the counter back to the right side, left side. And the difference this year in the counter is he's keeping, watch the right tackle. He keeps him in. The left, the right guard is the one who's going to pull, but Laro becomes the other blocker leading him up in the hole. And a good job by Smith. Good cut. Back. Yep. Can't bring him down. Ninth play of this drive. Ball's on the 11 yard line, third and two. Morrow, Smith follows the block. Gets maybe in the short down though. inside the uh, 10, but a good play by number 49, Mike Bristol. I bet you they go for it here on fourth down. Big crowd here at Alumni Stadium. All the coaches giving advice to Dan Henning. You know, we talk about movement. Here's movement here now, going the wrong way. Got to come on back, but they don't get much in now. Here's another block on Snells. John Spells pulls him down. Now there are three tight ends and four tight ends in the game. Here we go. Five plus minutes. BC's had the ball. Straight up they got Amari Walker. Loose ball! Loose ball! Rutgers has got it! Rutgers takes over! Amari Walker had the first down and more, and as he was coming down, the ball popped free, and Thomas Kelly takes over for Doug Graber's Scarlet Knights. Had the first down as they loaded it up, just dove over the top, but the important thing is you have to hold on to the football. Just straight ahead blocking, and he gets to the line and jumps over, and see the ball comes free before he even got hit. I don't even know if anybody hit it, and Kelly recovers it right here. What a gift for Kelly. He's coming in to help out. Ball lands in his arms. Walker will tell you that he should have had both arms on that ball. So Rutgers takes over from its own nine. Lucas, quick pump and go. He's got Thunderbird down the sideline. Ball's up there, picked off. Picked off by Terrence Wiggins, number 49. His fourth interception of the season. Boy, Lucas did not read that at all because Wiggins had it the whole way. Went with a pump fake who got the corner, but the safety Wiggins is coming over. You see Wiggins here, 49. He just reads it all away. Lucas never saw him. Not a good pass. One turnover deserves another. Ninth interception for Ray Lucas. BC takes over. We'll return to Alumni Stadium after these messages. I found a way to make my money really perform. I bought this car, a Probe GT. I refuse to go broke trying to look good. Did I mention this car's a blast? I'm no financial genius. I just feel like one. The front wheel drive Ford Probe GT is a lot of sports coupe for not a lot of money. See what I mean? Boston College with an interception and a beauty to stop a Rutgers threat. Now see Lucas, Lucas looking over to his right. Wiggins was in the middle of the field. He just read it the whole way. Not a great pass, and Wiggins picks it off. Twelfth interception by BC this year, and Ray Lucas, he's picked for the seventh time this season. You see what Rutgers is doing, a lot of passing on first down. They're trying to change up their game plan to, to keep uh, BC back on their heels. So far, it has not worked. Terrence Wiggins out of Bishop McDevitt High School in Philadelphia. From the Rutgers, 43. He goes third time with the ball here in the first period, just under four minutes to go. Play action, Hartzell with a lot of time. Over the middle, that one's picked off. Poorly thrown, 
and intercepted by Brian Sheridan, his first INT of the season. Boy, Sheridan started off that play right up on the line, and then he dropped back right in the zone. So Hartzell hasn't thrown an interception in a while. Again, he, he can't see it, but he's on the left side, Sheridan, then he drops back. Hartzell probably figuring he's not there and just throws it right in. There are two guys. They're really not. He was going for Kenyatta Watson. Probably shouldn't have thrown it because there were four white shirts there. So Henning talking to him about it. You bet. Fifth interception suffered by Hartzell this season. And, boy, the front, the nose end of, the, of that ball really died, dude. I, I bet you Art Rutgers runs on this first down play. They've been passing the whole time. See what they do? They got the offset eye. With Bridges. They give it to Willis with a lot of room. Terrell Willis. And he's into BC territory at the 49. First down, Rutgers brought down by Terrence Wiggins, a pickup of 17. Well, what they've been doing on first down is they've been passing the ball. This time, they run it to the defensive left side, and they cave that whole side down. Look at this hole. And Willis, who was good in the open field, gets some very positive yardage into Boston College territory. Doug Graber said Terrell Willis is the fastest player he's ever been associated with. Marvelous speed. Back in 4 3 neighborhood, 4 2. He's been clocked at. Here's Lucas. Draw Willis again. Another big hole. Takes it to the outside. Got the first down to the sideline and angled out of bounds by number 44, Daryl Porter. Yet another first down for the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. And Willis got a lot of help that time from Stephen Harper, his wide receiver. They always talk to receivers right there, number 12, about downfield blocking. He is going to be covered by a cornerback, a little delay to the left side, or in this case, to the right side. Now watch downfield number 12 in white. Sustains his block right there on Eric Short of the safety and gets outside down to the 29-yard line. So far, the lightning is striking for Rutgers. All of the BC 29, Willis again. Not nearly as much as he's creamed in there. A good tackle by Ed. Santa Bria, number 56, went face to face with him with help from Mike Mamula, number 59. And Funderburg threw a block on Matt Half, the strong linebacker, and just knocked him down. But there were other people who were there. Receivers are getting some blocking in on this game. Watch Funderburg, he'll come from the left side of the screen. C57 right there. And watch this blast. Bang. Oh, brother. Baby. <laughs> wow. That's a receiver doing that. Well, if the coffee didn't wake you up, that certainly will. Here's Lucas. Play action, in trouble, throws, and short hops to Funderburg, and he was under terrific pressure. Mike Mamula was in the left lane coming right at him. But credit Willis with just getting his hands out on him just at the last second to push him a little bit wide. So you're getting some good blocking by the so-called skill guys. Mamula, they put him outside in this 4-3 defense. You see him top of the screen. He gets outside. Just, you couldn't see it, but Willis was one um, who pushed him outside and away from uh, Lucas. Out of the gun go the Scarlet Knights on a third and eight. Harper, screen inside, loose ball! Almost picked off by number 58, Tim Morabito. Almost had a freebie. Boy, Mamola played that well, and this happened too fast, so... Rutgers set this up too fast, but there was pressure inside, so Lucas had to get rid of it. But because of the speed with which this was thrown, the defense was able to read it. He didn't catch it with his hands nope. either. Let it get to his pads. Eddie DeBorg now in for a field goal attempt. Boy, how many of the last couple three weeks they've changed? You see more guys have balls bounce off their, off their uh, pads right in the chest. 44-yard attempt. DeBorg long this season's a 39er. 39-yard is his best, 44, and it will be wide to the right. It's no good. So DeBorg now four for eight in field goals this season. So the Rutgers threat, outstanding performance by Willis with some big yardage, comes up short. We'll return to Chestnut Hill after these messages. It's tough being a fan when your team isn't the home team. Especially when I try to find coverage of my favorite team in the local paper. I'm lucky if I can find last week's score. But if you're like me, you'll be happy to know there's one publication that'll make you feel right at home. The Sporting News. You'll love the Sporting News, no matter what team you love, even if it is the home team. Call this number now and get four issues of the Sporting News free. 
You'll get opinions and analysis, team-by-team -team reports, and coverage of all the college conferences, plus baseball, basketball, and hockey all year long. Call now and you'll get four free issues of the Sporting News. If you like them, you'll get 24 more issues at this great TV price. If not, just mark the bill, cancel, and owe nothing. The four issues are yours to keep. So call now for the Sporting News, the publication that treats every team like the home team. Call now and you'll get four great issues of the Sporting News free. Call 1-800-346-4500 now. A couple of teams that have been scoring a lot of points. Rutgers in BC and nothing doing right now in the first 15 minutes here at Boston College. Dave Sims and Dave Jennings. And the last time out, Mark Hartzell suffered an interception. But we talked to Dan Henning about how sharp the quarterback has been. If you consider the fact that he hasn't thrown any interceptions in the last two games and he's thrown four touchdown passes and we've won both games, we'll take that every time. Doesn't sound like a Brooklyn accent. <laughs> From the 27-yard line. Pete Mitchell in motion. Got a couple catches on the afternoon already. David Green back in and a good stuff job by Keith Bryant, number 91. Hard Souls numbers very impressive, and Lucas right there also. High percentage of completion. Quarterback play picking up in the Big East Conference. No gain on that previous play, second down and 10 from the 27th. Hartzell on the draw to green. Big hole, 30. 35, crowd on its feet. 50, 45, got a chance to go. One man can get him. Strips for the ball, but he doesn't get it. First and 10 for Boston College. At about the 13-yard line, a big run by David Green. Curtis Tribbett saves six. And the right side of the line of the Rutgers defense, they took an outside rush. They took themselves right out of the play. Karwaki, you'll see him. Comes outside, and there's a big hole. Swinger also took him outside. Longish run from scrimmage for David Green. His previous best was 18 yards. That was a 60 now yarder. Watch this block on Giddings. It helps to open this up. That's Tim O'Brien in the center, and there's a big hole there. But again, the Rutgers out right side of their defense just took an outside rush, opening up a huge hole. That they did. First and 10. The 13, Mitchell in motion. Justice Smith gets a carry. He's brought down by number 72, Mike Karwacki, number 72, Karwacki, along with Sheen Spells, will be taking over for Bob Sneathan. Yep, Karwacki has been in on this series, did a nice job playing off the counter block, making a tackle, but still a couple yard gain, but that was, a, that was a nice run that time by Green. Sure was, longest run of the season for Boston College. The previous best was the 41 yarder by Justice Smith for a touchdown against Pittsburgh a few weeks ago. Marks a long count. Smith outside, caught there. Big play, Kitano. Kitano showed some great quickness. He beat him to the corner. Yeah, well, nobody blocked Kitano, and I don't know if Laro was supposed to take him. He, he double teamed the tight, the defensive end, and let Kitano, the outside linebacker on the strong side, come in free. You'll see it here. They'll double team the left defensive end. There's the double team, and nobody takes Kitano. Giddings was blocked, but he played off the block. Very impressive here with those numbers as BC goes with three wides on this play. And a whistle blows. Might have run out of time. End of the quarter. Well, the quarter end for why Don't you hate that? You're and, right in the middle of a play. You might have and something. And I'm watching Sneathan, who's back in the ball game. Amazing. 15 minutes complete here. Chestnut Hill, Mass. No score. Boston College and Rutgers will return for second quarter action after these words from our local stations. position your company as a leader in the poultry industry Get here ASAP. With the new Memo Start. Express pager from Motorola, you receive actual text messages instantly. Look, you're on track. Unlike those clowns yesterday who brought in some guy in a chicken suit. <laughs> chicken suit. Lose a chicken. Oh. 
Introducing the Memo Express Pager from Motorola for the messages you can't afford to miss. The Memo Express Pager from Motorola, now available at The Wiz. After a day at my office, I need a place where I can become civilized. And nobody can touch me when I'm in a Lincoln Town Car. In fact, the town car is so comfortable, I feel like taking a road trip for a little rematch. The new Lincoln Town Car Touring Edition features an all-new interior loaded with personal touches and $1,100 in savings, only at your Tri-State Lincoln dealer. Welcome back, everybody. Dave Sims and Dave Jennings with you from Alumni Stadium at Chestnut Hill, Mass. And tight ends, boy, one of the uh, hallmarks of Boston College's offense. And we talked to Dan Henning about the two great ones he has in Mitchell and Laro. They're both tough. Uh, they're smart. They pick up. They pick things up. They're not locked into anything. And I think whatever we we design to utilize them in, they're very good at. Look at the Rutgers defense that has to stop this tight end look. Is he sneezing? Look at that right elbow. Get that thing bandaged up. There he is. Going to play in some pain. Mitchell in the slot, top of your screen, inside of Greg Grice. Morrow in motion. Hartzell inside to Kenyatta Watson. And nice, nicely done. Number 23. What a play by Mark Washington, the strong safety. He may have saved the touchdown, Dave Jennings, because yeah, the wall was formed. This is a play they use. They delay him inside, and Washington, the safety. Sometimes the safeties get caught up in the traffic. But he did a nice job filtering through, and Watson never had a chance. So now another field goal from the right hash. Now, this one, uh, uh, the previous one, it was missed by Rutgers. Right hash a little bit deeper. This one a little bit closer, but he's really got to pull, pull it back in. David Gordon. Three for seven on the season. Of course, he's a left-footed kicker, so he's got to push it out. 26-yard attempt. Nicely done on that strong Hold, but it hit the upright and comes back. And the Rutgers players do a good job and get away from that ball, so that field goal is no good. We've had two missed field goals this afternoon. You know, I, I promise I promise you, if you told them to go out there and try and hit the upright, they couldn't do it. In not in a million years, right? But put it through the middle, bang, off the upright. And Beckley's the holder. His job just to put it down, try to get the laces away. Nice hands. Yep. There they are. Hit it nicely. It's like one of those golf shots. He struck it well, but the aim was not real productive. No score from BC back after these messages. How Ford reinvented the minivan in three words. First, we widened it, giving you the widest stance for secure handling. Next, we made it big on safety with standard dual airbags and anti-lock brakes. Then we added the most room of all leading minivans for all your cargo and up to seven passengers. And by sweeping away the old ideas, Ford created Windstar, a minivan like no other. The future belongs to the new Windstar. Bartender, send me down a rolling rock. You got it. <laughs> Excuse me, pardon me, can I get through? Rolling rock. One spring, one brewery for a fresh, clean taste every time. Can you make that two rolling rocks? You got it. Bruce Presley, nailing just a little bit, his pants undone. One of the game captains this afternoon. Looks like he's trying to get a stretch on his legs, Dave Yeah, he's got a groin pull, and they don't know if he'll return. We didn't expect to see Willis this quickly, but he has certainly taken advantage with some good runs. But you can see him stretching it out. A little bit of a groin pull. We'll keep an eye on him. From the 20-yard line. No score early in the second quarter. Terrell Willis with the call and knocked down immediately. Mike Mamula is there. Mamula's a defensive end and he comes in and it's a one-on-one -on -one block with Bridges the fullback. Mamula is set free. Bridges got to knock him down. Not a real good job. Mamula plays it inside and makes the tackle. One yard game. Mike Mamula. 
fact that some of the BC folks loves to play football. Real simple. That's basic game. Go to school. Loves to play football. Three wides for Rutgers. They give it to Willis. What a cut. Another cut. My goodness, what a run. First down, Rutgers. He made three, cut, three cuts that the ordinary back can't even think of them, let alone execute. And what happened is they took out half, brought in Clifford, a, another defensive back to match up in the nickel defense. So what does Rutgers do? They've got a wide open play. They just run the ball. And look at these cuts, as you said. They speak for themselves. 32-yard line. That's a reaction by Boston College and Rutgers. Boston College goes with a nickel, so Rutgers runs the football. Terrell Willis came in averaging 4.7 yards per carry. Gets another opportunity here. Wanted to readjust, but Chris Sullivan was right there. Number 93. First quarter numbers, Dave Jennings. Rutgers not on the board in the passing department. You know, then we talked about ball control. Look at the time of possession for Boston College, but the number's right above it. A couple of turnovers, two for Boston College, one for Rutgers. That negates a lot of your positive numbers. From the 33-yard line, the Scarlet Knights have three wideouts. Harper. Gibson, Funderburg. Lucas under pressure, hangs in wide open is number 15, Jonathan Gibbs, and he gets to the 40-yard line covered by Michael Reed. Now that time, BC did not go with a the nickel. They stayed with their base defense, so Rutgers stays with a pass that time. Good cushion down here at the bottom of the screen. Gibbs just runs down, just stops. Hey, I'll take it. Reed pretty far off, so good, good game making a third and two. That was the first completion by Ray Lucas. You see Harper, he kind of hobbled off the sidelines. Number 12. Not a good sign. Nope. Funderburg, Chris Hutton. They go to the top of your screen. Sprint out. Lucas throws. Oh, he had it and dropped it. Chris Hutton, two catches on the season. Should have had number three. And we've seen two drops today by Rutgers receivers, and in this this type of game, there's a penalty flag down on the field, so we'll have to wait. It's over on that side. It's BC pointing against Rutgers. If it is against BC against Rutgers, they'll turn it down, make him punt the football. You ready? Punting, punting. First of all, <laughs> there is no play. The play was whistled dead before the snap. All right, that changes things. Wait, we got more. It's a dead ball foul. Illegal encroachment. The offense is in the neutral zone. It'll be fourth down after a five-yard penalty. Brother. If there's no play in his third down, if there's no play in his third down, how can it now be fourth down? You bet. The that's clock the operator, please adjust the clock to 11 minutes and 54 seconds. But if it's no play, how can it go from third to fourth down? Exactly the question being posed by Doug Graber. What the heck is going on? Well, how can let's you see if that? they'll talk about it. I know Doug Graber's out there. He's got a question. If it was third down and there's no play, it can't be fourth down. Right. Miami scoring early, 6-0 over the Mountaineers at Morgantown. Now, the official just gave the signal with his hand. He's got three fingers up, the referee indicating it is third down. Okay, that makes a See lot more right sense. See it right there, that's third down. That makes a heck of a lot more sense. All right, so John Sophie has everything straightened out. Third and seven. Ball's at the 35. Lucas going to run. Boy, that didn't go anywhere. BC had that one smoked out. Gianna Kakis, number 92. Nick make the, made the play right there Look, with some help from number 46. That's Brian May. You don't see a, a quarterback roll out from the shotgun too often. Looked like he was going to run the option here. But BC had it uh, defense very well. So now we have fourth down. And look at the punter, Slovin, only back about 12 yards. Got a good one the first time. Averaging 35 a game coming in, but it's slumping mightily, and this is not a good one. Got a BC bounce. Brother didn't get a BC bounce, about four yards worth. And they mark it out at the 40-yard line. That punt covered just 23 yards. BC will have fabulous field position. 11-13 to go, no score. Here at Chestnut Hill Mass will return after these words from our local stations. Chrysler Concorde's dramatic styling, engineered quality, and cab forward design have so impressed car buyers that after its first year, Concorde has retained more of its value than any car in its class. 
Knowing that, Concord owners may want to take steps to protect their investment. Chrysler Concord, a valuable expression of form following function. There's one voice that almost everyone listens to. You have to find out how this affects the Long Island water supply. I Bill Butel of Eyewitness News. He's the voice of knowledge. What'll that do to tax rates in New Jersey? We've got to the voice of authority. If that checks out, we've got to send a crew to Jerusalem, because that would be a major... And the voice of understanding. So it's an extraordinarily joyful time for this young family. Time Eyewitness joy. News with Bill Butel, the most trusted voice in television news. All things come in time, including rain, snow, and ice. In the new millennia, luxury comes with front-wheel drive to help you hold your own no matter what. The new millennia from Mazda. As time passes, we'll all have some rough road ahead. So we built the new Mazda millennia to have a smoother ride than even a Lexus ES300. The new millennia from Mazda. You understand? You got it, Mike? Jake Pollard going over some things with the defensive lineman for Boston College. No score here in the second quarter, and might they do it again? This is uh, what has happened this year, and you look at last year's number, lost the first two, 93, won the next eight, and went to the Car Quest Bowl where they defeated Virginia 31-13. BC takes over from its own 40. David Green already has a 60-yarder. It's about four there. Rusty Schwartz, number 59, three-yard game. Run the counter to the left side. Good job by the linebackers on Rutgers. You know, you look at that last punt by Rutgers. That's the problem they've been having this year. They'll have a good punt and then a bad punt last year. Last week, they went with Sloan, and then they brought in Shermetta, but he didn't quite get it done. So we'll see how this game progresses in that aspect. A couple of missed field goals in this game. No score. 10.41 to go in the second period. From the 43, draw Green. Hit in the secondary. He'll be about a yard short. Number 23, Mark Washington met him at the 49. Maybe start to look for some maybe some more long balls here to stretch him out. Well, not, necess Hartzell. not necessarily. They've been having success moving the ball, but they threw an interception. They fumbled, and they missed a field goal. So they're moving the ball. They had it 12 minutes in the first quarter. You just can't make those mistakes that hurt you. The third short for the Eagles. 31% efficiency in the conference, and they get it this time. Omari Walker, you notice this time he had both arms wrapped around the ball. Omari going for a big first down inside the in the red zone, fumbled turned it over last time he had the ball. He's the guy in Walker who they like to bring inside on goal line situations and short yardage, and they bring in a third and fourth tight end. Just take it straight ahead. BC's won three of the last four meetings. Last time Rutgers knocked off Boston College was in 1991 at Rutgers Stadium, 20 to 13. From the Rutgers, 49. Take Slim motion, some play action, a lot of time. Deep out, got a man there, catch, Cannon, what a catch. First down, Boston College at the 29. That's a beauty. 20-yard pickup by Clarence Cannon, the senior from Roosevelt, New York. Boy, that's as nice a catch. You see the secondary, they've just got three deep. Cannon's going to run it, about a 15-yard plant and go outside. Watch this stretch out, catch with the hands, pull it in, come down inbounds. What a nice catch. Hartzell, not much pressure. Look at that catch with the hands. Pull it in. Good reception. Boy, that's outstanding. Hartzell, six for seven, 67 yards, and an interception. From the 29 go the Eagles. What a roll. Buy some time. Hartzell throws it a little bit too much on it. Greg Rice. Covered there by Curtis Trivet, number 10. 
And one thing about Hartzell, he's a big kid at 6'5", 215, just a sophomore. And everybody knows about the fabulous season that Glenn Foley had last year. Dan Henning said this kid's a better athlete, got a 37-inch vertical jump. And see his index finger there. He hurt that a few games ago, and he is going to have that problem with it all season. He's going to have to tape it. But he told Henning yesterday, or Dan Henning told us, he likes having that splint on there. He feels he throws better, so he'll keep that on all season. Also, Lucas, the uh, Rutgers quarterback. Both quarterbacks have been hurt this season. Hey, second and from the 29. Hearts are going to throw it again. Got a man wide open down the sideline, and they smoked it out there and overthrew a wide open Clarence Cannon. And look at the meeting right with the secondary as they're talking. Trivet and Kelly. Trivet left side. Kelly, the safety, should be coming over. Trivet lets him go, but Kelly's coming over too late. And right after the play, 21 Kelly and Trivet 10. They, look, see, he's looking back. He's saying, wait a second, what happened there? And they had a little meeting after that incompletion. So Boston College has a great opportunity to make a big play, but a, not a good pass. Tell you what, somebody's blood pressure, you can feel it up here. Pum, 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 pum. Wow, looking for help that wasn't there. Third and 10 from the 29. After the big 27-yarder, Shannon, come up empty. Penalty flag from the get-go. Hartzell buys some time down the sideline. Knocked out of bounds by Thomas Kelly. <laughs> All right, that's right. Uh, two fouls. First foul, illegal shift. Two backs moving. Second foul, holding on the offense. Daily double. They'll take the holding penalty because it'll be a 10-yard penalty instead of the five. Dan Henning. He's his club walking backwards. Next week, join us on our Big E's caravan as we go back to Pittsburgh. Temple. And the numbers may not show it, but Ron Dickerson has made some improvement with the Owls. They'll take on Johnny Major's Pitt Panthers. Noon time start next Saturday here on the Big East Football Conference Television Network. You had a heck of a game in Pittsburgh last week. It was unbelievable. The, easily the wildest game outside of street games back in Philly that I've ever been associated with. Well, this game's over. No, not quite. Oh, <laughs> another, yeah. Another touch. Well, the game's over now. What was the final score? The Lego shift on the offense. Penalty is declined. Holding from the spot of the foul, 10 yards, still third down. So the Eagles are pushed way back to See, the 47-yard line. The final score of that game was, what, 47-41? 47-41. And that becomes an 18-yard penalty instead of just your normal 10-yard because it's a spot of the foul penalty. Bet. So spot of the foul plus 10. Hartzell may have to go to the Vermont border to get a first down here. Third and 28. Under pressure, the blitz. They set up the screen at the beauty. Justice Smith. Rutgers covers it. That play forced nicely by number 43, Brian Sheridan. He turned him back inside, and then Smith ran into his own man, Dan Oriskovich. Yeah, very rarely will, when you have a third and long from that area, will they go all the way downfield and get it. So they try to go with the screens and the draws, and here you can see the pressure by Rutgers, so they run the draw. I'm sorry, the screen, Justice Smith right side, but Rutgers does a nice job. So for the second coffin corner attempt now, Beckley, remember, he nailed it a little too far. Had a nice pump, but just too far in the last one. Keith Mitchell, the snapper, aiming for the corner. Pooch is very high. Nice spiral. And got too much of it again. About six yards too much. What's the key on that, Dave, he's, real well, quick? he's going out of bounds. He's just not taking the right angle. Talk more about how to angle for the coffin corner. Beckley's upset. He wanted to meet Dave Jennings. He'll have to meet him later and get a tip. Back after these messages to Chestnut Hill. Sunday. It's the day the world takes a breather or gets a chance to catch up. It's our Sunday best and long Sunday drives. There's one truck designed for a day like today, Ford F-Series. With the safety of a standard airbag and rear anti-lock brakes, a spacious interior, and the kind of toughness that never takes a day off. More reasons why Ford F-Series is the best-selling truck 17 years running, and that's a lot of Sundays. Researchers at Rutgers are venturing into uncharted territory into virtual reality, but they're not playing games. They're exploring the medical applications of a new technology. This kind of university-based research can have a tremendous impact on your life, but it also has an impact here 
enriching classroom teaching, and keeping our students at the frontiers of their fields. At Rutgers, the tradition of excellence continues. A couple of high-scoring teams, and right now nobody's on the board, and Ray Luke is struggling one for five on the afternoon with an interception and six yards only. And we talked to Doug Graber and said, Doug, how are you going to keep him out of trouble? You're going to have to do a lot of play action. Well, that's certainly one of the things uh, that we have to be able to use to slow him down. And uh, and we're, we're going to do a few things a little different here and there in our offense today. Uh, you just can't let these guys tee off on you. Otherwise, the quarterback's in for a long afternoon. We've got a very athletic quarterback, which, uh, you know, is, is certainly helpful. But, uh, you know, you can't have him running for his life all day long. You sure can. Right now, Ray would consider this a long afternoon, being that he's only one for five. He takes over from the 20. Willis, nah. No, 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 no. Tim Morbido got that foot and said, no, no. I like the shoe size, but you're not going anywhere. And Morbido plays a nose tackle in this 4-3 defense as they shift it over. And the thing that they started out early doing was they were doing play action, passing on first down, but two drops caused him to go back through. Now, Morbido, double team. Watch him fight through it. Good job by Morbido. Should not beat a double team. It's not how it's drawn up offensively. They lose two on that. It'll be second and 12. And don't here's a key factor. Terrell Willis is going to have to carry the load because Bruce Presley failing now with a groin injury. Lucas from the gun. Steps up, throws, but maybe a five-yard gain to Marco Battaglia to about the 23-yard line covered by Stephen Boyd. Not a real big gain for Battaglia who averages almost 14 yards a catch. Miami, they missed the two-point conversion, but the Canes lead the Mountaineers 12-0, and the Canes want to beat West Virginia badly after last year. Florida State early, out on Clemson. South Carolina over Vandy. Purdue unbeaten in the Big Ten is trailing. Big play here for Rutgers, third and seven. Lucas buying time, and a run going nowhere. Stephen Boyd, big play. Stops him at the 24-yard line, the All-Big East Conference linebacker. See, the tough thing when a right-handed quarterback rolls out to his left, it's not easy for him to pass the ball. He has to have time. Now, Boyd, the backer, he just comes inside. Now, they're going to chase Lucas. He can't really get comfortable to throw it, so he's got to pull it down and force a punt. Let's see what Sloven does this time. The last punt was just 23 yards, and yet another big play by Stephen Boyd. It's only back 13 yards. 23-yard punt from the last time out. Sloven, they're coming after. Nice, high, spiraling kick. Kenyatta Watson, fair catch, a late one. Oh, and then he runs! It's a delay game penalty. <laughs> you bet. At 37, he clearly and absolutely calls for the fair catch. He'll, he'll probably tell the official he was he was shielding his, <laughs> his the sun his eyes from the sun, but there's no sun out here. He knows. I tell you what, I've heard some good alibis. I'd love to hear that one. Should be delay a game. Delay a game. Gets the offense for running with the ball after giving a fair catch signal. Five yard penalty. Or may, maybe he said, I didn't mean to. There's oh, the fair uh, catch bing signal. <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> you know what happened? He didn't think, and that, that's a strange situation. You think the coverage is good, then you realize, you know what? There aren't that many guys exactly. coming down. I got a lane here, after and he you changed give his the mind. Catch, after you give the fair catch signal, you say, well, well maybe I can. Maybe the official didn't see it. This copyrighted telecast is produced by authority of the Big East Football Conference and is intended solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Big East Football Conference is prohibited. Boston College taking over at its own 30. No score, 5.49 to go here in the second period. Hartzell on the draw, Green looking for room, not much there. Good play by 43, Brian Sheridan. Now the change at right defensive end for the Rutgers team. They've got Bruce Spaulding in now. He wears number 40, so they've had to make some changes on their defensive front. There he is. Again, Sneathan being out. He's been in probably for three or four plays, but he just can't play with that bad elbow. So Spaulding now in at right defensive end. Sheridan takes a seat too. Rusty Swartz, number 59, is back for the Scarlet Knights. Two-yard pickup. Come on, come on, come on. Parts of the throw. A lot of time underneath. Barrow, another catch. 
at about the 36-yard line. Laro is uh, second catch this that afternoon. Same pattern, other side of the field. Before he's lined up on the left side, this time lined up on the right side, just goes out, curls up, makes the catch. Four-yard pickup by Gordon. You know, it's funny, he's a he's an H-backer, blocking tight end, but he loves to catch the football. You know what, he does a good job, too. I mean, yeah, exactly. And, and watching uh, Mitchell, certainly that's a good influence, and he, he has Catching some talent. Catching with his hands, does uses, a nice job. He uses the hands indeed. From the 36-yard line, third down and four for BC. That's a straight drop. Flushed out by Spalding. Throws out of bounds, does a good job to throw it away. Green was in the vicinity, but nice play by Hartzell to get rid of it and don't take the sack. And outstanding coverage by Rutgers. You know, if you look at the numbers so far, Boston College has the advantage numbers-wise, but because of the turnovers, no score. And this works to Rutgers' advantage. So into the game now, again, Beckley, very good punter, and this time he can he'll be able to launch it if he's not going for the coffin corner. Funderburk is deep. Beckley, does, oh boy, he did hammer it. Funderburk back to the 16. Grace covering, slows him up, and the coverage outstanding for Rutgers number 44, Daryl Porter. That's a punt of 48 yards by Jeff Beckley. That was a beauty. We'll be back to Chestnut Hill after these messages. Under cloudy skies here in Boston. BC and Rutgers, no score late into the second quarter. And already Rutgers has seen enough of this of this BC front seven. We talked to Doug Graham to get his thoughts on this Cardinal and Gold. I think that their front seven is uh, as good as any we've played. I'd put them up there with Miami. I mean, they really play hard. And uh, they got some great rushers, and they're really up the field and very aggressive. So, you know, we just got to try to slow them down a lot of different ways. So far, the passing has not been real crisp by Ray Lucas. Ray needs to complete some passes here as he takes over in the 22. Play action. Throws short to Bridges, the fullback. Nice tackle in the secondary by Daryl Porter. You know, that's what they started to do at the opening of this game. Play action first down. Try and get Boston College back on the heels. But a couple of drop passes hurt them, and they had to get out of it. But here they go back to it. Play action this side, roll out. There's the play action to Willis. See the effect it has now. Hit the, the fullback over on the weak side. It's a big eight yard gain on first down. Eighth catch, it, make that seventh catch of the season for West Bridges. Focus on the draw, here's Willis. Stops, the face mask, there'll be a face mask there all over the place. Somebody's gonna get hurt by the flying flags. Oh, do you see Santa Maria? You got hit in the face mask by a flag, you called it. <laughs> Boy, John Blyce, the center, had a nice block. Keep an eye, face he's mask. the center. The defense, pulling the offense, penalties oh, offset, oh, oh, replay. Boy, so that comes back. No wonder there's so many flags. A lot of laundry on the field. I know it was a unanimous decision on the face mask. <laughs> Took it to another dimension with the hole to do it over. See, that's what, that's what Rutgers would like to do. Play action, first down. Stay away from that running, and then come back and run when they've got the short yardage situations. 
What do you think's going through Ray Lucas's mind right now because he has not been, been sharp? I want to tell you that coming up halftime, stay with us. Take a look back at last week in the Big East. Big East gridiron close up and stats and highlights. Lucas got to be talking to himself. I have got to complete some passes here. Snap. Not real smooth. You know, that running play went nowhere. I think Bly snapped the ball early yeah. or everybody else moved late. Yeah. Because yeah. he snapped the ball, nobody moved. That was uh, an unusual looking play. Mamula and Boyd with the tackle. Watch nobody move on the snap. Here's the snap. Nobody's moving. Look, nobody. <laughs> Giannakakis was across the line. Well, BC, of course, they move on the movement of the ball. Now, look, they're talking. What was that snap count? Was it two or one? I, tell you. I thought you said one. It's been known to happen in football. I can tell you. All set for 30. Bridges in motion. Pitch it outside. Willis. No. He'll be a yard short. The force. Well done by Matt Half, number 57. And is Damon hurt? Damon getting up very slowly. And now they're going to call a timeout as Lucas is over there with him and he might limp off the field. Damon, there you can see him. That's a huge, could be a huge loss for Rutgers. Looks like he's going to try to gut it out. Boston College. It's their first time out. 2.20 to go, and BC calls Fourth the down. T.O. Yeah, and they... Now watch 79. He tries to cut his man. Can't see what happens, but BC had a lot of guys up on the line of scrimmage. Willis tried his best to get forward. Now, here you can see Damon, 79, left of your screen. He just stayed down for a while, and he was very slow getting off, getting up to his feet and off the field. Now, BC called a timeout because, of the, because it was 2.20 left. If Rutgers, if they didn't call a timeout, Rutgers would have just let that clock run Absolutely. down. So a good call by Dan Henning and his staff. We don't know what happened to Damon. We just, uh, we'll try and get word to you as we find out. Total offense thus far. Rutgers, a very unproductive 83 yards to this point. Rutgers, a ball club that is fifth in total offense in the conference. BC with a buck 90. Damon sixth on, in the conference. Damon on the bench looking at his left knee. Slovin, a punt, not a bad one. If it hits, it's going to kick forward. Just let it go. Just let it go, Rutgers. Don't even touch it. Don't even down it. Don't touch, don't touch, don't touch it. Hear him say, don't touch it. No, you don't touch it because that stops the clock. Let the official stop the clock. Five at two, three more seconds. Outstanding punt by Jared Slovin, a 50-yarder. And that time you saw Kenyatta Watson saying he waved everybody off. Reed got out of the way. Matter of fact, Reed went down on the turf so he wouldn't uh, be near the ball. And you say, well, what's two or three seconds? But, hey, it could mean the difference in one play or a field goal attempt in, in the next two minutes and six seconds. And all we have to do is reference you to our game last week, West Virginia and Pitt. Exactly. So many people. Heard from so many people. Say, ah, turn the game off once Pitt went ahead. Right to BC now, taking over. It's on 19. 2.06 to go. Arsenal, draw to green. Racing into the secondary up to the 29 yard line. Well, how many missed tackles on that one? Karawaki missed a tackle. Also, Cassidy, uh, Al City Scatano missed a tackle. So, a good run. Picks up nine on that play. And on the hurry up offense, they got one second yard down, to go. Second one at the 28. Arxel going to throw, two-minute offense in effect underneath Mitchell. Yes, it is. Mitchell at about the 33-yard line. That'll be a first down. Stop the clock to move the chains. And Bob Sneathan coming back in for rugby. Still a lot of time left. A minute 37. It will start the clock when they get the chains set. One of the differences between college ball and pro ball. Now the clock starts. One third you see it. From the 33-yard line. Hartzell looking for Mitchell over the middle, wide open at the 50. Down to the 43-yard line. Look at that. He squeezed through four guys. First down, Boston College. Pete Mitchell, another catch. Came in with 21 catches on the season. How does a tight end, and there's a timeout now. Well, again, officials timeout while they set the chains. How does a tight end get open down the middle like that when it's Pete Mitchell? You know he's the guy. 24-yard pickup. He's got four catches. And Yada Watson underneath. Kitano and... Washington bring him down. Pete Mitchell, five more catches will be the all-time leading receiver for BC. I think BC is confusing Rutgers by going to the middle of the field. Usually on these two-minute drills, you go outside and try and get it out of bounds. Now it's a 37. Archer with time. 
lost penalty. Flag should be a hold. Hartzell going to run. Ooh, he should have run out of bounds. Why would a quarterback take on two hard-charging DBs? <laughs> Goodness gracious. You Michael can hear that Roberts. up here. Michael Roberts with a big-time lick, and he loves that, doesn't he? And, it is, and again, the quarterback doesn't know it's a hold. He doesn't know what the penalty is. Listen in on this explosion. Yeah, uh. And that wasn't Wilson Pickett, folks. Wow. That Fetch was... his helmet still ringing. Woo. Somebody answer that. Now he's going, if I'd known it was a hold, look, at he's got his hands out of his knees. He's saying, if I'd known it was a hold, I'd have just fallen down. Holding on the offense, 10-yard penalty, still second out. Tell you what, that's what experience, experience teaches you. I don't have to be the hero. I get the glory for throwing the ball, not running the ball. Tarkenton retired a few years ago. 15-yard penalty. That's why I like being a punter. See, I can watch that stuff from the sideline. <laughs> Pound the guys on the back when they have a nice hit. And say, hey, guys, that was good sound, good huh? Good job. Good pop, good leg. Big penalty, though. Puts sure them back, way back close to their own 45. 52 seconds to go. No score. They run a loop. BC picked it up, but not for long. Great play. Shane Spells is there for the sack, but give a lot of credit to Rashad Swinger, who started that action going and flushed him right back to Spells. Exactly. And only rushing four guys. And Spells again in for Sneathan, who was hurt, does the job. First sack of the day for Rutgers. On the draw, that's going nowhere. Rutgers is there to make the play. Giddings and uh, number 89, Stephen got a piece of that too. And if I'm Rutgers, you think about calling a timeout here so they can block the punt. Let's see who called the timeout. Timeout, Rutgers. Sure. First timeout. Now, Sneathan gets back in the game on occasion on third down rushing plays. He is the left defensive end, bottom of your screen. He's got the bad right elbow. And he led with that arm. Can you believe and that with exactly. the elbow? Exactly, and he couldn't wrap him up. You said it on that. So now you almost, now here's an interesting situation. 14 seconds left. Do you think about throwing up the Hail Mary? I don't think so, because if it's incomplete, then you give Rutgers a chance for a Hail Mary. Got to kick it. Got to kick it. So you got to kick it, and Rutgers goes at Got to go after the block here. Sure, and Beckley's had a pretty good day today, too. So uh, they say root it out of there. Stay with us coming up at halftime. We'll take a look at best of the best and some of the rest. Big East football last week in the conference and stats and highlights coming your way from Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. Dave Sims and Dave Jennings with you. Miami not converting on the point afters, but leading 18-0. Lost a uh, game there, a very emotional game last year at West Virginia. Tech leading Pittsburgh early on. Florida State, boy, the Clemson program has really slipped. Purdue unbeaten may not be for much longer. Beckley, Duke unbeaten. Against Wake, here's the punt. Line drive, Won't nobody back. Let's see if it rolls in. Can they stop it? He does. And does he keep it out? No, sir. You know, coming into this game, Boston College had the sixth best net in the nation. Well, three touchbacks really hurts that. Indeed, it does. 58 yards. Greg Grice couldn't keep it inside the five. So now, what do you think Rutgers does here with four seconds to go? They just may want sit to just on the do ball. The, they may do, do you don't the, even run a play. You just <laughs> kneel on the ball. No sense trying to be a hero right now. You run a play. Even if I, you run a running play, you're liable to get somebody hurt or fumble. As a matter of fact, remember the last time we worked together, West Virginia Rutgers, and I make that West Virginia. No, no, I know what it was. Miami and Rutgers. And Miami almost went 90 yards on a play. Remember, they were pinned inside. They're going to take a knee. Indeed. Smart play. So this is a surprise. <laughs> Rutgers, 12-point underdog here at BC. And there's no score. 30 minutes complete at Chestnut Hill, Mass. That is a surprise. Stick around. We'll be back with our halftime activities after these words from our local stations. 
your dead mouth is I need a place where I can become civilized. And nobody can touch me when I'm in a Lincoln town car. In fact, the town car is so comfortable, I feel like taking a road trip for a little rematch. The new Lincoln Town Car Touring Edition features an all-new interior loaded with personal touches and $1,100 in savings, only at your tri-state Lincoln dealer. Position your company as a leader in the poetry industry here ASAP. With the new Memo Express pager from Motorola, you receive actual text messages instantly. Look, you're on track. Unlike those clowns yesterday who brought in some guy in a chicken suit. <laughs> chicken suit. Lose a chicken. <laughs> Introducing the Memo Express pager from Motorola for the messages you can't afford to miss. Find Motorola pagers at PageNet. For more information, call 1-800-PAGENET. In the mood for style? Consider the Mazda 626. It's beautifully equipped for comfort and security and reliability. If you're in the mood for a car this exceptional, make it the Mazda 626, built in the USA. Go see your Mazda dealer for a limited time lease offer. We make the exceptional affordable. Lease the Mazda 626 for just $1.99 a month now. Time now to take a look back at happenings in the Big East Football Conference from a week ago. And we go to Pittsburgh for the Backyard Brawl. Beautiful afternoon for football. And not so beautiful for the special teams. The Merrick field goal is blocked, and Harold Kidd comes up with it. A 10-point swing. They were going to tie it up 3-3, but now it's 10-zip. West Virginia special teams on fire, and so is their quarterback, Chad Johnston. 40-yard hookup with Zach Abraham, 17-6 West Virginia. How'd you like to be a defensive coordinator in this game? Not really, because here's Vanderpool getting wide open, 31-6 Mountaineers. John Ryan, though, comes right back. They spread the offense and hit Dietrich Jones. How was that not intercepted? 80-yard TD pass makes it 31-12 West Virginia. No hesitation by Johnny Majors. Let's go for two. Yeah, he said we wanted two, but I don't think he was thinking of uh, this way. Not at all. Matt Tafoni takes it the other way. Two points from the Mountaineers, 33-12 at this point. And this was a huge game back and forth, and you'll see the exciting end of this contest coming up later on in our broadcast. Look at the total net yards. Almost 1,000. Amazing. Just remarkable. Cincinnati. And out of conference game at Rutgers, Terrell Willis shows he's in the run game. Give him a hold. Get outside. He's got Eden Chris. Now this play set up a really good stop with Mark Batavia. Maybe the best tight end in the Big East next to Mitchell. 7-3 Rutgers. A super play here. Thunderbrook with the grab. Is he in bounds? Yes. That is a beautiful layout and catch. Lord Nelson and company love that one as the Scarlet Knights get two late interceptions to hold off. Another out of conference game. Virginia Tech taking parts of East Carolina. And this big mm -hmm. East Carolina. Big play right here. Cornell Brown causes the fumble. Lawrence Lewis picks it up. He's gone. 6 nothing Virginia Tech. Boy, a lot of hitting in this game. And if you are a fan of hits, watch this play. Bang, bang. Touchdown, Tommy Edwards, though, takes it in. Tech leads 17-3. The Shazo, how could he get so open? Always have to account for this guy. 27-20, the final. Tech over East Carolina. Big day for Tommy Edwards, filling in for the injured Dwayne Thomas. And Temple came back, but BC wins it 45-28. Win number 500 all-time for the Boston College Eagles. And there you have it, a look back at happenings in the Big East Conference. We'll be back with more halftime activities, including some I need a place where I can become civilized. And nobody can touch me when I'm in a Lincoln town car. In fact, the town car is so comfortable, I feel like taking a road trip for a little rematch. The new Lincoln Town Car Touring Edition features an all-new interior loaded with personal touches and $1,100 in savings, only at your tri-state Lincoln dealer. There's one voice that almost everyone listens to. We have to find out how this affects the Long Island water supply. I'm Bill Butel of Eyewitness News. 
reservoirs. Here's the voice of knowledge. What'll that do to tax rates in New Jersey? We've got to the voice of authority. If that checks out, we've got to send a crew to Jerusalem, because that would be a major... And the voice of understanding. So it's an extraordinarily joyful time for this young family. Eyewitness joy. News with Bill Butel, the most trusted voice in television news. It has an abundant number of safety components, including dual airbags with terminals plated in gold to protect against corrosion, steel guard beams in all four doors, and crumple zones built into its structure. In an image is everything world, we proudly present the substance is everything car. Introducing the new Maxim from Nissan. Welcome back to Halftime, everybody, here at Alumni Stadium. We're halfway through the season, and there have been a lot of plays worth seeing again. At least we think so. Here's our stab at a mid-season highlight reel. First kick was 53. Oh, that's a Howard shot. My goodness, look at this. He hit that out of his end zone, let it go, it'll go all the way into the end zone. The seven yard line, tag first down at 10 and a running play. And there goes Kenny Oxendine to the 40. And the freshman breaks three to the 30, to the 20. The Ox is on the way. He will score. Kenny Oxendine, a 53 yard touchdown run. Draw to Shipman. Shipman gonna try to break one. Big yardage. He may go you to the 50. Unbelievable. To the 30. To the 20. Out of bounds at the seven yard line. Only the angle prevented six. Pick it up and go, let's see. Pick up the bounds. What 
Rising in, it's picked up. Vanderpool is there. He can go. Let's see. 40, 30, 20, 10, 5. Touchdown, West Virginia. He broke one. Pitch the action, Ryan, he got it! Oh, he got it! He takes the lead! That's it. Another game, Tyler Young forced to. He's got a man down the sideline. Oh, he's got it! He's got it! Touchdown, West Virginia! Yard ball will be remembered for a long time. We'll be back with more halftime activities after these words from our local stations. All things come in time, including rain, snow, and ice. In the new millennia, luxury comes with front-wheel drive to help you hold your own no matter what. The new millennia from Mazda. As time passes, we'll all have some rough road ahead. So we built the new Mazda millennia to have a smoother ride than even a Lexus ES300. The new millennia from Mazda. 10 minutes? Perfect. I'll see you then. Bye-bye. Like clockwork. Ah, the bubbly. Thank you, buddy. Hey, your door is set. Have a nice day. No. Locksmith. Nine minutes. I have a big day. Taxi! <laughs> Close. You guys take American Express? Let's go! Hey! Uh, it's just not fair. Momentito! Hello. It's a technical problem. Barry, what's going on in there? The American Express card. Don't leave home without it. Great shoes. We continue with halftime here at Alumni Stadium. Dave Sims and Dave Jennings, good to have you with us. And right now we want to salute significant achievements in the Big East Conference from last week. And let's start with our Offensive Player of the Week, Zach Abraham from West Virginia. Well, last week a lot of catches, but the big one, a 60-yarder, 15 seconds to go to give West Virginia a victory over Pitt. Our Defensive Player of the Week is Mark Washington from Rutgers. Yeah, hey, Rutgers leading 14-9, and he had two picks after that to secure the win. A couple of guys get honors as special teamers. Harold Kidd is one from West Virginia. Yeah, he returned a block field goal for a touchdown, and, uh, you know, if he can do it, someone else can do it in the same game. You bet Tom Barnt did a great job returning a block field goal for a touchdown. He's out of Pitt. Take a look now at the standings, Syracuse and Miami, up top, undefeated, Virginia Tech and B.C., with uh, Rutgers and West Virginia still not totally out of it. Nationally, the Big East is happy to have four teams represented in the top 25, and both national polls, very impressive, and don't forget, the top four teams in the Big East will be going to bowl games this year. Each week, the Big East Football Conference recognizes two student-athletes whose hard work enables them to compete in academic performance with athletic achievement. Recognize Rich Thunberg, a wide receiver from Rutgers, the pretty business major who's had a fabulous year both on and off the field, and the political science major from Boston College, their outstanding strong safety, Eric Shorter. Congratulations to one and all. We'll continue with our halftime activities here at Alumni Stadium, and we'll get to all of that after we pause for these words from our local stations. nineteen ninety four big east football brought to you by your local chrysler plymouth dealer chrysler concourse dramatic styling engineered quality and cab forward design have so impressed car buyers that after its first year concord has retained more of its value than any car in its class knowing that concord owners may want to take steps to protect their investment Chrysler Concord, a valuable expression of form following function. Hi, y'all. We got a letter from Melissa from Clinton, Illinois. Do you give in-home demonstrations of your product line? I'll be right over. You ask for a home demonstration, and I am here to give it to you. And this is to you. Ooh. <laughs> 
guava mania, mango flavored iced tea. Voila! Snapple fruit punch ice pops made from the best stuff on earth. A working farm in Queens, Kids and Biz Expo, Breakthroughs in Blood Research, and the Jewish Norman Rockwell tonight at 7.30 right here on Channel 7. Monday on Live, Who's the Boss star Judith Light in a whole new light. Plus one of the brightest new music stars around, Sean Colvin performs. Watch Live Monday at 9. Right here on Channel 7. No score here at halftime. Rutgers and Boston College are probably be one of the biggest surprises in college football this afternoon. Great to have you back with us, Dave Sims and Dave Jennings. And I'm surprised. How about you? Well, you, I'm surprised, but when you see, you see the reasons why, the fumbles, the interceptions, the missed field goals, then you understand there are no points. Well, defenses have played well. We have to give credit where credit is due in that situation. No doubt about that. Some of the highlights, uh, there have been some interesting moments, and one of them by David Green, a 60-yard run right here. Boy, nice job left side of the offensive line opening up a hole, and then he just took it downfield. But as I just alluded to, no points. You think you get a 60-yard run, and it would set up a touchdown, especially the way Boston College hammers the ball. But when they tried to go for it on fourth and short inside the 10-yard line, they had the first down, and they uh, fumbled the ball. Yes, indeed. Watch a play here as uh, Clarence Cannon with a marvelous, marvelous layout for a catch on a nice throw with a lot of zip on it by Mark Hartzell. Just lays out as nice a catch as you will see. Pulls it in. When he hits the ground, he's still got it. Well, here's another reason why we don't have any scoring left because Omara Walker going for a third down fumbles right here. And I don't think anybody hit the ball. I couldn't see from whether anybody hit it. It looked like he just lost it. But that was on that fourth and short yep. after that long run. And then interestingly enough, after this play, interception, and then another interception. <laughs> One of the big stories of this game, too, is Rutgers playing without the Thunder part of their offensive tandem. Uh, Bruce Presley's got a groin injury, and he went out on this play. Yes, we didn't expect to see Willison so fast, but, you know, that's that's one problem in, in football. You do have a lot of injuries, and there was one right there, so we'll keep an eye on Presley. Did not come back during the course of the se of the end of the first half, so we'll keep an eye for this half. You could see Presley that uh, when he was on his back, he got wishbone there, and that's how he incurred the uh, groin problem. And last year against Boston College in a very hard-hitting game, Bruce Presley separated his shoulder. So there he is back on the sidelines. Looks like he's going to try to give it a you know, give it a shot, but I would say it's doubtful at this point. Halftime stats, certainly a time of possession in favor of Boston College at the uh, bottom of your right-hand column. The turnovers loom large, too. Well, two to one time of possession, something BC has done. If you remember in the Notre Dame game, they had it for almost 38 minutes, and that's what helped the win. But when you have the turnovers and the missed field goals, that's what leads to a 0-0 score. You see the passing yard. It's just 19 yards for Rutgers. Ray Lucas, just one completion in the first half. He's struggling mightily. A lot of that has to do with the BC uh, defense also. They're getting some people in his face. Well, you know, the Rutgers, what I liked about how they started out, going with the you know a little different plays on first down the play action trying and instead of the runs but a couple of drop passes got him out of it yeah it's uh it has been a tough offensive first half for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights their defense has done a terrific job they've taken advantage of some turnovers Rutgers some missed choice. field goals Electric. by Boston College and one good thing Rutgers will get the ball in the second they, half they won the toss deferred to the second half and as you just heard they will take the ball but you know the one thing you have to feel good about if you're Rutgers is hey they've been outplayed but it's 0-0 so they've got to feel good about that on the other side of the ball Boston College saying hey we're better than this team we outplayed them we can beat them Coming up next week, our Big East Caravan will go back to Pittsburgh. We'll take a look at the Temple Owls, our first look at the Owls this season. And they'll take on the Pitt Panthers. Pretty competitive game last year to uh, end the season at Veterans Stadium. Yeah, the the uh, Owl at Vet Stadium and Ron Dickerson. Everybody has a great appreciation and respect for Ron Dickerson, and they're rooting for him. Here's Danny Davis, takes it in. Talented young back for Ron Dickerson. Lots of good running backs in the Big East this year. Now, Henry Burke, sophomore quarterback, Oklahoma has improved terrifically this match against Larry Faust, Akron Zips. It's a first road win for the Owls. This is GD Pass, Troy Kersey. And the Owls also have a good group of young receivers, and of course the mainstay number 54 is Lance Johnstone, who made all Big East linebacker last year. 
He is outstanding. Johnny Majors, the rebuilding continues at Pittsburgh. John Ryan last week came off the bench to replace an ineffective Sean Fitzgerald, and he hit Dietrich Gels on this one. A beauty, a game breaker, 80 yards, and it helped Pitt get back into the game. Here's Todd Pratt. That's as well as you're ever going to see an onside kick. The surprise onside kick, and the kicker gets it. West Virginia Receiving Club turned its back and never saw it. Tyler Young, a former offensive lineman at Notre Dame, has done a pretty good job as a defensive tackle for the Panthers. And you'll see all of those gentlemen next week, noontime start, when the Temple Isles pay a is visit the field. BC is going out. to the Pittsburgh Panthers on our Big East Football Conference Game of the Week. So what do you look for from Ray Lucas and the Rutgers Scarlet Knights, Dave well, Jennings, in the I, second half? I would think some of the same things we saw beginning of the first half, play action on first down. It worked. It, it got BC a little bit out of their defensive rhythm, but the receivers have got to hold on to the football. On the other hand, Boston College, they just got to stay with what they, they have done all year, just pound the football with the H-back blocking Laro. Just don't turn the ball over. Too many turnovers and don't miss field goals. And You know, I, I think that... Uh, there's no overtime in college football, so they got to uh, have a couple of points here as Boston College gets ready to kick the ball off here to start the second half. Jeff Beckley to kick it off. Ray Lucas, three for seven, 19 yards, and an interception. Here's Beckley, and we're underway. Third quarter. And it does go out of bounds. So Rutgers will take over. Legal procedure. At the 35. Kick off out of bounds. Rutgers will elect to take the ball at the 35-yard line. Well, Rutgers starts off with pretty good field position. Joyce helps. Let's see what they do. Let's see if they come out and, again, try to do those first down play actions a little bit different from what they've done in the past. Again, keep an eye on Presley also. Again, he's got the groin injury. He is not on the field right now. You've got Willis in the backfield. Lucas, three for seven in the first half. This is the best start, field position-wise, by the Scarlet Knights. Willis wriggling his way into the secondary and goes down at the 42. Boy, Eric excellent Shorter. block Good by pop. Robert Barr, number 77, the right tackle. There he is. Now keep an eye as you look from the end zone on the right side of the screen, number 77, just a real good block. Bridges leads up, and there it is. A nice hole also. Pataglia tight end, giving him about seven and a half, seven yards on first down. Pataglia is a guy they've only gone to once this afternoon, Dave. They need to try to get him involved in the game number 81 for Rutgers. Thunderbird to the bottom of your screen. West Bridges in motion. Willis, nowhere to run. The guards got jammed up. Chris Kennedy couldn't get out cleanly, and Stephen Boyd was there to finish that playoff. Well, it's not very happy, but Boyd, as he is the leading tackler on this Eagle defense, play that 4-3 defense. And, you know, both teams switched to the 4-3 this year. We are talking to Henning yesterday. He said a lot of teams going to that 4-3. It's a little more aggressive defense. You put your defensive ends out more so they can do a lot more things on pass rushing plays, not get caught up inside in traffic. Rutgers 0 for 5 on third down situations. They'll go from the gun. Mamula with a big rush. Incomplete. Going for Funderburg. Willis was in the neighborhood. And Rutgers a 3 and out just with Dan Henning and BC Woods. Exactly. I don't know if Willis got his hands on the ball. He did not know the ball was going behind him to Funderburg. And he might have distracted Funderburg a little bit. But now the crowd getting into it. Another 3 and out. Slovin in the game to kick the ball for the Scarlet Knights. Low snap, good protection, good boot by Slovin. Chases Kenyatta Watson back to the 12. Coverage by Washington, he missed the tackle. To the wall, and the save by number 43, a good play by Sheridan, Brian Sheridan, a 47-yard punt, the return, 10 yards, but there's a penalty flag on the play. Boy, you, they got to the wall. Washington should have made the tackle, but normally that's an illegal block. They push him back a little bit. There it is, so Rutgers gets a break. Washington should have made the tackle down around the 10-yard line, but nevertheless, they do get some yardage back on the penalty.
One of the most frequent calls you'll see in college football these days. Pushing him back above the waist on the return. First down, the 12. A terrific defensive field position by the Scarlet Knights. Okay, let's see if we can keep an eye right there. Number eight, that is Jeff Ryan with a block in the back. BC takes over at its own 12. Mark Hartzell, the quarterback, Keith Mitchell, in motion. David Green's the running back, maybe three yards over the left side. Play made by number 99, Rasad Swinger. Swinger, one of the big fellas up front. 6'3", 285 out of Manalapan, New Jersey. See Keith Bryant and a key man on that front line, Bob Steven, has been spotted in and out of the lineup. Got a very bad elbow. Fell on it last week against Cincinnati. Pick up a two from the 14. Hartzell, quick drop. Throw to Kenyatta Watson, breaks it. And he picks up a first down. He's out to the 27-yard line. Rashawn Giddings with the tackle. Derek Ward, the corner, tried to come up and make the play, but couldn't do it. So a quick pop on the left side as we're looking at it. Hartzell reading the defense. Just a quick three-step drop. Finds his man open over here. Now keep an eye on 28. Coming up, can't make the play. That's Derek Ward, the cornerback. Yana Watson gets some positive yardage. First down. 14-yard pickup. Sound like Red Cash in there, dude. Ward gets his 28 Jeez. yards. On the day for Kenyatta Watson, up the middle again, and nicely defensed. Keith Bryan again on the stop with help from Giddings. Oh, I missed beat the trap block that time by the guard. Rutgers has improved defensively. He's got 19 quarterback sacks. Rushing yard has gone down. Points allowed has improved. Again, that's gone from the 3-4 to the 4-3. And we just... <clears throat> Both teams going to the 4-3 this year. Got to be aggressive. You've got to try to dictate from the defensive end, unless it's sitting back is the theory these days. Hartzell going to throw. Got Kenyatta wide open. Watson got it at the 45. You heard the crowd murmuring. There he is. First down, Boston College. Coverage by Mark Washington. A pickup of 27 yards. No pressure that time by the front four of Rutgers. And the crowd, as you called it, the crowd saw it. Rutgers didn't see it. You'll see him drop back. That's Hartzell, a quarterback, just dropping straight back after play action. Has all day to throw and finds. Look how wide open he is. Yada Watson had a couple nice catches today. Five catches, 55 yards for Kenyatta Watson. Got two touchdowns on the season. After starting at its own 12, we see at the Rutgers 45. Hartzell going to throw it again. Looking people off, finds his. Go to that Pete Mitchell. Mitchell, nice five yard gain. He bailed him out. Mitchell went right in the middle of that defense. Jennings sat down and made himself available. I think Rutgers is so run conscious, they don't they don't rush many people, just rushing four. And the five guys up front pick him up. Mitchell, he's gonna settle down in the middle. Just wait a while, wait a while. He's open. He's open. Getting comes over and watch how many guys get a hit on him. He doesn't go down. That's three, four, five. Now he finally goes down. Dan Henning said Pete Mitchell could start on a lot of pro teams right now. Get back to the run game, and again, not a lot doing. Rutgers being pretty strong up front. Swingers there, number 99, and Dan Henning plotting. And he said he likes to throw the football. He had a team with Washington Redskins that threw a ton when they won a Super Bowl. But I think he prefers that ball control. He, you, you hear it a lot up here in the Northeast. Playing in the Northeast later in the season, you're going to have to get to the running game, so you might as well develop it. Maybe third three, down. Having a stellar day. He's got a 60-yarder to his credit this afternoon. Hartzell, in his last six minutes. Walker, the delay. The tackle into the secondary. First down, Boston College to the 26-yard line. Sherrod in the outside linebacker comes up to make the play, but does not make it. You'll see him go right by, right there, 43. Gets blocked, and Green gets some yardage upfield. First down for the Eagles. Under 12 yards for David Green. You know, I'd say they're in scoring range, but 
Seeing how that first half went, I don't know if scoring range is until you get inside the five. Impressive drive by Rutgers to the by BC at the Rutgers 27. This started back on the BC 12. Three. Lyle got him a block, and that was a, an impressive three-yard gain because that play looked like it was shut down. Jim Coronera. Number 93, he made the tackle. It's part of Molson's sponsorship of Biggie's football. We are, will be selecting the Molson Ice player of the game later on in our broadcast. Now, last week, when did you pick that? <laughs> About four times in the last minute and a half. <laughs> it was remarkable. 47-41, I gave last week, West Virginia beat the pit. Balls at the 24. And Timeout. DC calls timeout. Some Their confusion. First time they burn out. a timeout. Make sure everything is on the same page as BC continues to threaten. Still no score. We'll be back after these messages. The second half of today's Biggie's football telecast is brought to you by Motorola Pagers for the messages you can't afford to miss. And by Bolson Ice from Canada, the land where ice was born. It could only come from here. Canada, the home of ice. Molson Ice. Ice brewed by North America's oldest brewery to be colder and bolder. Yet smooth as ice. Molson Ice. From the land where ice was born. This new strategy is going to position your company as a leader in the poultry industry. Get here ASAP. With the new Memo Express pager from Motorola, you receive actual text messages instantly. Look, you're on track. Unlike those clowns yesterday who brought in some guy in a chicken suit. <laughs> chicken suit. Excuse me. Lose a chicken. Introducing the Memo Express pager from Motorola for the messages you can't afford to miss. Whooping it up, and not a lot of offense going on here at Chestnut Hill Mass. Dave Sims and Dave Jennings with the Big East Football Conference Game of the Week. No, but BC has a nice drive going as you look at some of the out-of-town scores. Miami having to worry with West, West Virginia, 25-zip. Looking to avenge that 17-14 game last year, and Pitt hanging tough with Virginia Tech. South Carolina on top. And Purdue will fall for the ranks of the unbeaten. They do have a tie in the Big Ten. Texas, after losing, and how about Duke pouring it on Wake Forest? Duke takes on Florida State next week. Nice play of this drive. Justice Smith tripped up from behind Rashad Swinger. The swinger did a real nice job that time because they ran away from him. He came down the line, made a shoestring tackle. He is the right defensive tackle. You see him, number 99, to the right of the upright. He comes down. Nice job. Big third down play for the Eagles. From the 22-yard line. Hartzell, crossing pass, got Kenyatta Watson at the 15. He's got the first down for Boston College. Well, good job that time by Watson, knowing where the first down marker was, went to it, went past it, came back, and still had enough room for the first down. They brought Catano, so they brought five, but still Boston College with a good protection. Kenyatta Watson, this has been his drive. On this drive and on the day, six carries, 61 yards, putting a 27-yarder on the fourth play of this drive at the 16 now. Hudson up top. And man wide open. Mitchell makes the catch at the 10. And hit hard. Finished off by number 43, Brian Sheridan after Thomas Kelly held him up. How does he get so wide open? I mean, Pete Mitchell leading receiver, all-American, best tight end in the in the conference second time he's been wide open mitchell six catches 74 yards again no pressure Hartzell just looks over here. look how much room he's got that's thomas kelly the free safety 
Good protection here by BC. The only rushing four you should protect. Got an extra tight end leading in for Amari Walker. He's inside the five. They got a great push. 65, Josh Porter. Got a good block. First and goal for the Eagles. Amari Walker picks it up. You know, he's only averaging two yards a carry. The reason being, he's in these short yardage and goal line situations. Four touchdowns this year. They loaded up with four tight ends. They put Dragos in the backfield, leading up right there, number 83. And Walker taking it across the five down to the three yard line. Always have to watch play action of the tight end down here on the goal line. They leave Dragos 83 in, in the backfield. 13th play of this drive. It began back on the BC 12. Walker over the top, way too far out to be diving. And he was met at his peak by 57, Rashawn Giddings. Boy, that's where both guys leave on their respective sides of the line of scrimmage. 57 white is Giddings. Watch him meet over the top. See if we can pick him up here. They both go up together and meet. That's a great oh. shot. <laughs> they got about, oh, four inches on the play. Sean Devlin, 55, doing a good job standing some people up. Meet at the top. Here they go, Crunch. Now, again, pretty soon play action the tight end will work. Balls up to three, second and goal for BC. No score here in the third quarter, 6.23 to go. Play action, Hartzell, got a roll in. Touchdown, Boston College. Beautiful, great call, Dave Jennings. Well, Hartzell's happy, and that's what happens when you load it up and you just keep running it inside and inside. You get guys so inside conscious. And there was nobody over there, and Hartzell just took it. Here's the play action. Same play as before, but he holds on to the football. Walker dives over the top, but it's just one-on-one -on -one over here. And coming over late is Mark Washington. Nice Touchdown. Time up on the offense. I didn't see that one. Well, it must be a celebration. I think it's after the touchdown. First running touchdown so, for Mark Hartzell. So they're either going to put it on this extra point or put it on the kickoff. I'd assume they put it on the kickoff. See, so it'll be a 15-yard penalty, so make it kick off from the 20 instead of making them try the extra point from the 18-yard line. Now, they're still talking about it, looking over at Graber, trying to decide what they want to do, kick the extra point from the 18 or kick it off from the 20. We finally got word. Unsportsmanlike conduct. After the touchdown was scored, the touchdown counts. 15 yards will be assessed against Boston College on the kickoff. Did they call Hartzell with the excessive? I mean, well, he they, went over and did some five, some high fives with some folks along the front row. That's why college football players like the penalty system. Nobody, they don't. The officials never tell you who it is. <laughs> David Gordon's been perfect on point afters this season, 16 for 16. Great hold by Beckley, and Gordon remains perfect. 6.16 to go, third period, and we finally have our first score. It's BC leading 7-0. We'll return to Chestnut Hill after these words from our local stations. A lot of little touches go into every new Plymouth Neon. A very powerful 132 horsepower engine, a spacious cab forward interior, and a special chip resistant finish. And oh, one more thing dual airbag protection. So, it always practices safe driving. Say hello to Plymouth Neon at your Chrysler Plymouth dealer. something I've been meaning for you to try. Oh, yeah? Coors Extra Gold. Slow roasted malt gives it its rich dark color. And its rich dark color gives it its name. Extra gold, huh? I had no idea this stuff was this good. Slow brewed Coors Extra Gold. Surprising one beer drinker at a time. In the mood for style? Consider the Mazda 626. It's beautifully equipped for comfort and security and reliability. If you're in the mood for a car this exceptional, make it the Mazda 626. 
built in the USA. Go see your Mazda dealer for a limited time lease offer. We make the exceptional affordable. Lease the Mazda 626 for just $199 a month now. Mark Hartzell with a plus and a minus. He got the touchdown on a well-timed bootleg here. It was a beauty, Dave Jennings. It was. Again, the, the running game sets us up. Everybody inside. Washington coming over late. Now, here's the penalty, folks. Here's Keep it going. We'll get it for you in a second. All right. The high fives. That's the penalty. That's the penalty. David, that's the well, penalty. That's a, well, they've changed the rules, and... We've seen a lot worse. Now, the ball is setting on a 35, but they're going to have to mark it off. And Hartzell's saying, but coach, I was just talking to some of my student fans, friends, classmates. That's right, dorm mates and everything. So meanwhile. It's a huge penalty. It sure is. Hey, you don't have to tell Syracuse about that. They had one of these Remember against that? Oklahoma. Early in the season? 14 plays. Look at the time. 7-10 off the clock. BC's had the ball to this point now for 27 minutes and 7 seconds to 11.37 for Rutgers. One of your points early in the game was about ball. BC planning on holding on to the ball. Now, normally after a kickoff, Rutgers would have the ball somewhere around a 25, 27, 22 in there. But now the ball in the 20, they could get the ball up by midfield. Indeed. Jeff Beckley will kick off. Terrell Willis deep for Rutgers. He's been averaging. 20.1 yards per return, and how about Beckley nukes this one into the end zone? How about that? Big play. Jeff Beckley took it upon himself to erase the 15-yard penalty, and he picks up his quarterback, Hartzell. How about that? Graber is going nuts over here. Not, not externally, but internally he is. You know he feels they should have gotten great field position. He lost 25 yards on that play. Man, that is a great kick by Beckley, and maybe Willis was just up too close. And there's not, wind's not a factor today. The flags are blowing a little bit, but wind's really not a factor. Boy, Jeff Beckley out of Plymouth, New Hampshire, 6-1 senior. You see the flags on the goalpost just barely moving. Loaded up big time on that one. So Rutgers with only 88 total yards compared to 317 for Boston College. Yet Rutgers only down 7 0. Lucas completes a very short pass. Gain of four to West Bridges. Michael Reed covering for BC. He's really going with the short game, Dave. What do you think of that? I mean, the way that uh, Lucas has struggled, the fact that they've gone to such a short pass again. Well, something they have to do with the pressure. Mamula, who is an excellent defensive end. Boyd, an aggressive front seven, so you can negate that by the short three-step drops, and especially on first down. Four yards on first, they got that time. Play action. Far, nice job. But Taglia with the catch. And his second catch of the afternoon. And Reggie Funderburg absolutely wiped out number 44, Daryl Porter with a peel back block. We have seen the receivers for Rutgers blocking downfield. And you see the play action on second down and a quick step up pass to the tight end. Watch the block a little bit. There it is. Ooh. Goodness gracious. What, and they are manned at the top of your screen. And Rutgers calls the timeout, did he get it? Boy, he gets a break, the side judge gave it to Funderburg. Gave him the, the uh, timeout. Some confusion down on the Rutgers sideline. Rutgers, Rutgers called timeout before the ball was snapped. Timeout, offense. So a break for Rutgers. They will have a first and 10 from the 35. Not sure why they called that timeout. Obviously, they weren't ready, but not sure why they weren't ready. Timeout on the field. 5.30 to go in the third period. Boston College leads it 7-0. We'll return after these messages. Canada. It's a land like no other. With a beer like no other. Molson Ice. Ice brewed by North America's oldest brewery to be colder and bolder. Get smooth as ice. 
Molson Ice, from the land where ice was born. A new set of academic standards will go in effect in 1995. To practice, play, or receive an athletic scholarship, freshmen will need a minimum grade point average in at least 13 full courses in high school and minimum score on the ACT or SAT. Make it a point to talk to your coach or your guidance counselor about these requirements. Prepare yourself now. It's an opportunity to hit the books. This message provided by the NCAA. Well, Rutgers called a timeout to make sure everything was together. And they need a big play here and a big drive. 5.34 to go. BC has dominated the clock. They only lead by 7-0, but Ray Luke is still not on track. No, and you hate to burn your timeouts early in the half, but if you're confused, if you're not ready, you have to use them. Look at the difference. 3-1. to one. First and 10 for Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. Willis up the middle. Chris Sullivan drags him down with help from Eric Shorter, number six. Bruce Presley pulled groin back in the early stages of the game, and he is unavailable for Rutgers. Not a good situation. No, and they have good running attacks, but in spite of two guys, they haven't the ball in the end zone with those two in the last, well, three and a half games now. Indeed, Bruce Presley. He hasn't scored since the Penn State game. And Willis hasn't scored. He scored once, and that was at Syracuse. Harper in motion from the gun. Locust flush. Penalty flag. Locust goes down, and that's how he hurt his shoulder. He picks up the first down. He hurt his shoulder on a scramble against Miami. Yeah, but bring it back for holding. And, you know, the good decision there by Locust. Got to be a quick decision. He got some positive yardage for the first down, but, again, they're going to bring it back. Offensive holding. That's something you, that Rutgers can't afford to do against BC if they want to have a chance to win. Holy offense. Second time they've had positive yardage and then had it called back via the penalty. Keep an eye on Mamula, number 59. And he gets tackled. You can see him tackled right here, and that's Damon, number 79. So 10 yards from the spot of the foul. You bet. So it's a 13-yard penalty. Now Rutgers comes in with a three wide, so Boston College responds with a nickel as Matt Haft, the strong linebacker, comes out. From the 27, second and long. Harper in motion out of the gun. Big rush by BC. Lucas slips as he delivered in the face of a rush by Mike Mamula. His front foot gave way. And he was unable to complete the pass. In fact, he didn't have much of a chance. No, when his foot went out, his the ball came down and way about five yards in front of the receiver. So a couple of mistakes here by the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. It's hurting them. Now Lucas will step up. Now just watch his, should be his left foot. Slipped. Crowd getting into it. BC leading 7 0, 427 to go in the third. Nowhere to go. Willis, forget about it. At the 25, Ryan May, number 46, with the tackle. That'll be a second tackle for a loss on the season. That one, a big one for the sophomore from Valley Cottage, New York. He comes in on passing downs as they went to the nickel, but it doesn't mean they're going to pass. He's got to be aware. So into the game again is Jared Slovin, who hasn't had a bad day today. He's punted, but had one short punt, but for the most part, he's punted well. Lost a yard on that play, fourth and 19. Good snap. Ooh, Bryce pulled up, and that's a horrible kick with a generous bounce. It landed back at the 45, but look at this bounce. Wow. That ball landed at its own 45 and then rolled about 20 yards. 37-yard punt for Jared Slovin. BC looking to add. We'll be back after these messages. It could only come from here. Canada, the home of ice. Molson Ice. Ice brewed by North America's oldest brewery to be colder and bolder. Yet smooth as ice. 
frozen ice. From the land where ice was born. Aunt Ethel and the whole family are visiting, and you get to play tour guide. Uh-oh, your car's in the shop again, and you need wheels. Headed for a wacky weekend somewhere? Whatever your needs, Budget has the car you need. Budget, a smart place to start. On the road or at home, Budget has you covered. The smart money is on Budget. Delighted to have you with us here at Boston Couch. Just not home ass, Dave Sims and Dave Jennings and the defensive brain trust working things out on the sideline. They had a good series, and now the offense will take over at its own 37-yard line, and the quarterback, Mark Hartzell, on a roll. He's 16 for 20 and hit his last eight passes in a row. Nice clean drive last time, scored a touchdown. Something that's hurt them earlier this game is turnovers, interception, fumble, and some penalties. Last time BC had the ball, they went seven minutes and 10 seconds, 14 plays and 88 yards with a score by Hartzell. Start things off with Green. Nowhere to go. Good defensive play. Boy, Shane. Jim Guarnera. Guarnera doing a nice job against the counter, and that's something that's a staple of the Boston College offense and the Dan Henning offense. They run the counter back to the, as we're looking at it, back to the to the right side. And there it is, Guarnera doing a very nice job. So that's the guy they aim the counter at, is that defensive end. Third tackle for a loss this season for Guarnera. Pull back to the 35-yard line, Mitchell in motion. Screen to Mitchell. Makes the catch and makes some people miss. Out to the 44-yard line. Pete Mitchell, that's a play they tried to run to Kenyatta Watson. Didn't have a lot of success with it, but one thing about Mitchell, he will catch the ball. Same play, different guy. Mitchell's going to come across now. You're going to want to keep an eye on Catano, number 80 in white eventually, but just he waits for the guys to go underneath. See Laro there. Now watch right here. Laro with a good block on Catano. Frees up Mitchell. Just short of the first down. A couple yards to go. Ball at the 44-yard line. Third and three. Mitchell having the field day. Seven catches. Watson six. Green close to the first down. Loose ball. Loose ball. And the Rutgers coaching staff trying to get that call in their favor to no avail. They say he was down. Boy, Laro got away with a hold on Catano that time. He hooked Catano and pulled him down, and Catano wanted the hold, but not to be. But fourth down. I expect they go for it here. Henning will say we can make it. Oh, he's going to send a punter on the field. Crowd oh, that doesn't that. like that. Crowd does not like this at all. Of course, remember the Notre Dame game? They ran a fake field goal. So Rutgers has got to be very aware of any kind of trick play here. In that Notre Dame game, it was Matt Hasselback, the holder, took the snap and picked up a valuable first down. Snap to Beckley. Aims for the left corner. High spiraling kick, Thunderbird calls for the fair catch, and Beckley gets it out of bounds at the 16-yard line. Not a bad punt. Yeah, he doesn't like it. He's trying to lobby for it. No, I went out about the 13 or the 10. 38-yard <laughs> punt. Don't forget your towel there, Mr. Uh, Beckley. Got to go back and get your towel. He left it on the 30-yard line. Get your towel, Beck. Beck, get your towel. Somebody's got to tell him to get his towel. I'm sure that's his security blanket out there, too. He's angry. Temple, Pittsburgh, our game next week. Al is improving. Still looking, however, for their first win in the Big East Conference. Taking on the Pitt Panthers, noontime start. Hope you can join us from Pitt Stadium next Saturday. Nobody got the towel. How about that? I hope you can. that does not play into the game. Three and out for BC. Rutgers going deep. The tagger got it to him. Holds on to the 38-yard line. First down, Rutgers. And, and what do you talk about often? A receiver catching the ball with his hands. It's very important. It's now. Tagley just running down the seam. He'll be on the right side. Lucas on first down just throws it up over the linebacker in front of the safety. You see him pull it down with his hands as someone takes the towel off the field. Balls up to the 39. 
23-yard gain, longest gain of the day for Rutgers. Taglia. Uh -oh. Couple of catches. And oh, baby! Woo! Nick Giannakakis wasn't buying any of that fake action. Left untouched on the right side. And he didn't go for the play action, and Luca's shaking the cobwebs. He's going, wow, never saw him. Top of your screen. See him come in? John Akakis, nobody, and wow, free one. Almost could have got a penalty for a face mask, but I don't think he got it, so no penalty and a big, almost about, we'll call it an eight-yard loss there, on nine-yard loss on first down. Nice play by Nick out of Lions, Illinois. Back on 18 pounds since last year, first sack for the Eagle. Final seconds, third period, BC leads it, seven nothing. Lucas over the middle, but Taglia gets back close to the line of scrimmage around the 39 yard line. Stephen Boyd wrestles him down. So they're going to a reliable receiver, but it's gonna take some time throwing those, uh, those digs to Marco Bataglia. And that will do it for the third quarter, 45 minutes complete here at BC's Chestnut Hill campus. Eagles lead it 7-0. We'll return for more fourth quarter action after these words from our local stations. Chrysler Concord's dramatic styling, engineered quality, and cab forward design have so impressed car buyers that after its first year, Concord has retained more of its value than any car in its class. Knowing that, Concord owners may want to take steps to protect their investment. Chrysler Concord, a valuable expression of form following function. Hey, Dave, there's something I've been meaning for you to try. Oh, yeah? Coors Extra Gold. Slow roasted malt gives it its rich dark color, and its rich dark color gives it its name. Extra gold, huh? I had no idea this stuff was this good. Low brewed Coors Extra Gold, surprising one beer drinker at a time. Welcome back on a real nice day for football. Cloudy, overcast, temperature 63 degrees. Dave Sims and Dave Jennings with the biggest football conference game of the week in BC. While it is racking up tremendous numbers offensively against Rutgers, leads it only by the count of 7 0. If you looked at the scoreboard and saw 7 0, you'd assume that the other numbers are pretty even. If you looked at the numbers, you'd think the scoreboard was lopsided. But it is not because of the turnovers, a couple missed field goals, both teams, and uh, 7 0. And Rutgers, because of that sack, is putting a third and 11. This is what Ray Lucas and Doug Graber wanted to stay away from. Front seven of BC, a good one. They're going to be turned loose. Chris Sullivan, Tim Morabito, Mike Mamula, and Nick Giannakakis. Here they come. Mamula on the outside. Lucas delivers. Got it. Thunderbird breaks free. First down, Rutgers into BC territory to the 42. A big play. They had to have it. They got 20 from Reggie. Went with three wide receivers. Boston College goes with a nickel, only rushing four. So Lucas making a relatively quick decision. Steps up, finds Thunderbird right down the seam. There he's wide open between the linebackers and the safeties. Funderburg, his first catch of the afternoon, and he came into the game tied with Vanterpool of West Virginia. Five catches per game. That tops in the Big East. Lucas steps up. Now he's going to run. But Taglia, sideline is wide open. 20 to the 15. First down, Rutgers. Ray Lucas, great job improvising. He found the Taglia, and Rutgers is threatening to tie the game or take the lead. You know, Lucas responding very well to pressure. He, he came up the field quickly. Damon pushed Mamula outside. Now watch him step up quickly into the pocket. Now he's going to run. He finds the Taglia. He just drops it over the guy. Taglia takes it upfield. Taglia, a reliable receiver. Now five catches, 76 yards. Rushing four, they double team Morabito. Keep everybody else clean, and that allows Lucas to get upfield. Crowd into it now. This drive began back on the Rutgers 16. They're at the BC 13, first and 10. Sprint out, got a block, and that throw intended for Stephen Harper. Harper covered boy, Luke, by Eric Shorter, and boy, boy, he was wide open. And look at Lucas, upset about something, maybe. Harper didn't run the correct pattern. We couldn't tell you. And, and Harper, again, see him limp 
he's been bothered earlier in the game. He ran out and took took himself out of the game as he was limping. You see his both ankles are taped. He'll stay in the game. No, he's going to come out as number nine, Chris Hinton, takes his place. Doug Graber would love a victory. Four and three, Rutgers, one and two in the Big East, tied with West Virginia going into today's action. The road has not been friendly to the Scarlet Knights. They need a win today. Willis breaks free inside the 10 and brought down by Matt Half, number 57. He made something out of very little. Brian May was in there, one of the linebackers. He grasped for legs. Let's keep an eye on number 46, May, if we can. He'll come up. You see May just to the left now, switches over to the right. Watch him meet Willis in the hole. Whoops, nothing. Yeah. It's very slick. Big time telling. Big play here for both clubs. Third down and four from the seven yard line. BC leads it seven nothing, early fourth quarter. Lucas in trouble, throw back, gets rid of it. How about that, Battaglia? Got a lot of room, got some blockers. Touchdown, Rutgers! What a play by Lucas. And you have to think, are they gonna go for two here? Are they gonna kick the extra point? They might go for two. Let's see what Graver says, but what an improvisation. No, they're going to go for one. What an improvisation by Lucas that time as Boston College came with a blitz. Man, just a not, not a very pretty pass, but he gets seven. Great play by Lucas. Lucas was there, but Taglia makes the catch, and he had a lot of help. Watch the linebacker coming up inside. That's Boyd. And also Matt Half, but look at this. He got a fair caught it. Good blocking downfield. Battaglia, who's been a big force here in the second half, takes it in, and we're one kick away from a tie ball game. Eddie DeBorg is two this year, gets it. It's perfect, and we've got a tie ball game with 13.36 to go in the fourth period. Marco Battaglia ties it up. It's 7-7 at BC. Back after these messages. Canada. It's a land like no other, with a beer like no other. Molson Ice. Ice brewed by North America's oldest brewery to be colder and bolder. It's smooth as ice. Molson Ice. From a land where ice was born. This new strategy is going to position your company as a leader in the poultry industry. Get here ASAP. With a new Memo Express pager from Motorola, you receive actual text messages instantly. Look, you're on track. Unlike those clowns yesterday who brought in some guy in a chicken suit. <laughs> chicken suit. Excuse me. Lose the chicken. Introducing the Memo Express pager from Motorola for the messages you can't afford to miss. Marco Battaglia, number 81, the pride of Howard Beach, Queens, New York, coming up big in this the second half. He's got seven catches for 90 yards and none bigger than this last one. A fabulous improv play by Ray Lucas. And sometimes the quarterbacks have to improvise, not how it was drawn up. But you, saw, you, you know, football is all about making plays. And it doesn't matter how you make them as long as you make them. And that time, Lucas made it to Battaglia. All of a sudden, it's a 7-7 ball game. 13-36 left to go here. Mighty quiet, too. Yes. The, the drive, impressive. Eight plays, 84 yards, almost three minutes. And now Ray Lucas's numbers have come up dramatically. Ray Lucas on the afternoon now, 10 of 17, 121 yards, a touchdown and an interception. And Lucas, last week against Cincinnati with 13 for 25, 157 yards, two touchdowns and an interception. So we got a ball game here, 7-7, 13-36 to go in the ball game. Kukowski with a high kick, fair catch, drop, loose ball, and he falls on it. That's Ed Santabria, number 56. I bet he was the most frightened man in this ballpark when the ball's coming right at him. You know, that's what they teach the up guys on the short kicks. Go ahead, call for the fair catch, which is legal on a kickoff. Just got to pull it in. Bang. It's called a Tarzan catch off the chest. Hey. 
26-yard line will be the starting point for starting point for Mark Hartzell and company. 7-7 ball game, and Hartzell's had a good afternoon himself throwing the football. Justice Smith, the draw, maybe two. Shane Devlin, number 55, is there. Good play with help from Brian Sheridan. And the guy who made a nice play was Rashad Swinger as he pushed his man back. I think it was Norrie pushed him back into the hole, causing a few problems there. So Rutgers, uh, I think, has a little momentum on their side right now. Indeed. They were above a three and out. Swinger, Spells, Devlin, and Guarnera, the front four for Rutgers. Show blitz, here they come. Sheridan from one side, Catano from the other. And a break because Mitchell slipped. And some good hand there. The presence of Thomas Kelly helped. He might have got an ankle, but Mitchell had a lot of room in front of him. Just tied on that reception. He needed nine catches on the day, and with that, he's tied Mark Chamora. He's with the Green Bay Packers as BC's all-time pass reception leader. It's that time by the Rutgers defense, but well read by Hartzell and Mitchell. The crowd very appreciative. Very impressive numbers. Good company. Pete Mitchell, you bet, third and five, 31 yard line. They rush four Smeathens in there. Kenyatta Watson, he's got it, but he's short of a first down. Katana with the coverage, the mark at the 34-yard line. And even though he was driven back a yard or two, he still didn't have the first down yardage. So you talked about a nice three and out by Rutgers is what Graber would like, and he got it. They'll leave a fourth and a long two, and Watson getting what for? You got, we, go in, we go through this time yep. and again. Know where you what you have to get and get it. Go there and come back. If you're not open, well, that's the defense's job. Beckley, punt, not a good one. Out of bounds. Thunderbird goes over and takes it out of bounds at about the 25-yard line. So Rutgers will have decent field position. Beckley did not hit that one well, although the roll gave it to him for 43 yards. We're tied at seven. Rutgers has a chance to take the lead. 11.30 to go. Fourth period back after these words from our local stations. A lot of little touches go into every new Plymouth Neon. A very powerful 132 horsepower engine, a spacious cab forward interior, and a special chip resistant finish. And oh, one more thing, dual airbag protection. So, it always practices safe driving. Say hello to Plymouth Neon. At your Chrysler Plymouth dealer. Love is a word you can't explain, love. Between love and madness lies obsession. Obsession for men. Calvin Klein. Your gift with any $32 Obsession for Men purchase at Macy's. It has an abundant number of safety components, including dual ends with terminals plated in gold to protect against corrosion. Steel guard beams in all four doors and crumple zones built into its structure. In an image is everything world, we proudly present the substance is everything car. Introducing the new Maxima from Nissan. Got a ball game here. Early stages, fourth quarter. Dave Sims and Dave Jennings with you. Biggie Football Conference Game of the Week in Rutgers has seen its quarterback come to life. Many would say just observing in the first half, but getting it done in the second half. And this uh, contributes to the momentum swing. And I'll tell you, that last pass by uh, Lucas, not the prettiest pass, but it was worth seven. Keep it on the ground with Willis. Stephen Boyd, no surprise there. He makes the tackle. I wonder if Willis is used to getting this kind of work with uh, Presley going out with that groin pull early in the game and not coming back. Take a look at the scoreboard. Miami continues. 25 zip over West Virginia. Virginia Tech 
Boy, that is a big, big game next week. Tech in Miami, down in Miami. Florida State leading big. Clemson hardly a surprise there. Willis, 15 carries, 69 yards on the afternoon. Ball at the 25, second and eight. Lucas could throw. Fullback had it dropped. It was looking for number 44, Daryl Porter. West Bridges with a couple of catches on the afternoon. That really hurts this team. That's about the third or fourth drop right in the hands today on key second down plays. Because now instead of third and about three, you got third and eight, and that's a big difference. So Grave, Doug Graber has to be disappointed in the number of drops today by his receivers. And Bridges has caught several passes today. The bad news is that Rutgers is 0 for 7 on third down. And when you have a third and eight, you can't be expected to pick that up a whole lot. Three wides for Rutgers. Keep an eye on Battaglia. He's number 81, the tight end. And Rutgers came in second only to Syracuse in third down conversions on the season. Rut Lucas runs for his life. Gets rid of it. Boy, that was dangerous. Stephen Boyd had him wrapped up. Three and out. Good job by Boyd in the BC defense. Yeah, and that, see that drop pass by Bridges allowed him to come with a blitz because it's third and eight instead of third and three. And you see what happens when he put pressure on a quarterback. So now into the game to punt, who didn't have a very good punt last time, was Jared Slovin, but did get the nice bounce. Seventh punt coming up for Slovin. Good one here. Watson from about the 37. Finds a crack, gets up to about the 46. 38-yard punt, a 10-yard return for Kenyatta Watson. South Carolina over Vandy. Oh, baby. Goodness gracious. Rolling it up. Purdue was unbeaten in Big Ten play until now. SMU coming back. But Duke, what is the surprise team of the year? Absolutely. Fred Goldsmith, they're looking at a, at a top tier bowl game. Even if uh, everybody expects them to lose to Florida State, but they may only come out with one or two losses on the season. On the 47 yard line, Hartzell under pressure, gets out of it. By some more time, throws, and Mitchell can't make the play. It was a tough grab. Coverage. By Thomas Kelly. Boy, that's a bad job by Rutgers because they had him sacked for about a 10 or 12-yard loss. They brought the linebackers inside. Boston College, not enough guys to cover it. And watch Hartzell doing a nice job getting out of here. Pressure coming right up the middle. Swartz and Bryant had him. Look right there. But good, you got you got to give credit to Hartzell getting out of it. That ends a streak of 11 consecutive pass completions by Mark Hartson. Mitchell in motion. On up top. Mitchell's got it and the record. All time BC receiving leader. 165 career catches. And he's acknowledged by Greg Landry, number 63. One of the best in the country, Pete Mitchell. At nine catches, 89 yards today. And Rady to Pete Mitchell. Wow, that's a significant reception. It still leaves a third and long for BC. Play covered just three yards. We haven't seen this number in the game, number 89 for Rutgers Sneed, and back in the game playing right defensive end. Down here at the bottom of your screen. A bad elbow, blew up on him. Hartzell, all day, over the middle, great catch by Clarence Cannon, first down Boston College to the 33-yard line. Well, Rutgers playing a deeper zone, and the safeties drop back, and Cannon cut right underneath the safeties. Hartzell finding him for a nice job. You can see it left side of your screen, right in front of the safeties. First down, Boston College. Cannon's had a great day. And the gorgeous layout catch in the first, first half. That was a 20 yarder. Green almost broke it. Shad Swinger prevented the cutback and more damage. I thought Bryant was in the neutral zone when the ball was snapped, but no flags. Crowd uh, thought so also. 7 7 ball game, 850 and counting. Left here at Chestnut Hill, Mass. David Green 
What a day. Remember, he had a 60-yard carry, so he's got 19 for 56. 20 for 116. Second down and nine. Ball's at the 32-yard line. Marshall going to throw blitz. They found it. He threw it behind Grice on the flanker sp uh, screen with some room to work with. And that's a play they have used at least three times today, so Hartzell not accurate on that pass. Threw it behind him. And one thing that Hartzell does not want to do here is take the sack there at the 31-yard line, which would be a 48-yard field goal, which is well within Gordon's range. So they do not want to take a sack here. Obviously, they'd, they'd like to get the first down. Hartzell on the day, 21 for 27, 209 yards. He needs a big play here on a third and nine. Put on the blitz, it's picked up. Throwing, it picked off, a big one for Rutgers. Down the sideline, they're gonna call him out of bounds. It's picked off by Keith Price, number 45. Well, a they, tremendous play for Rutgers. And credit the, the pass rush of Rutgers doing a nice job. Katana, there's 80. He comes on the rush. Laro does not do a good job picking him up. They could have called him for holding. Also, that is Keith Bryant getting in there. They get pressure on the quarterback. He's got to throw it early. He throws it inaccurately. And a nice pickoff. Again, the pressure. He throws it early. Does not see. Defensive back for the interception. Nice play by Price. His first interception of the season. Rutgers fans getting into it. 11-yard return by Keith Price. Turns it over to the offense. Can they capitalize? Gibbs and Funderburg to the top of your screen from the gun. The draw to Phyllis. Not much happening there. Chris Sullivan, number 93. Did you notice that time Lucas had to go to the silent snap count with the noise here in the stadium? And that takes the advantage away from the offense because they're not going on sound. They're just going on movement of the ball, which is what the defense does now. If there's a lot of noise, we'll keep an eye on Lucas. Watch him lift his, probably his right leg. The center, Leitch, sees that and then snaps it back when he wants to, if there's a lot of noise. It's not very loud right now. Starting to get a listen. Now see if Lucas just lifts his leg when he is set, his right leg. Okay, there it goes. Now they're going to snap the ball. From the 35, they loop. Lucas throws and a catch by number 15, Jonathan Gibbs. He's short of a first down as he gets up to the 41-yard line. I'll leave a third and three for Rutgers. Remember the last time on the... They had a third and eight because of the drop pass yep. instead of the third and three. Now they got the third and three, so maybe Boston College doesn't blitz in this yeah. situation. Maybe they do, but you can draw on that. Approaching seven minutes in a 7-7 seven -seven ball game. Now run it. Hartzell got a couple of, I think that down. Willis got a couple of good blocks, but that thing closed Boy. off in a hurry. Wiggins kept Rutgers from getting the first down. He wears number 49. He is the free safety. He came up. Willis was close to the first down, but Wiggins filling it nicely. Willis appeared to be ready to go for it. Again, you can draw it here on third and short. Now watch 40. Now he kicks the outside. Now watch 49 red. Here he comes. Willis about to get it and they get stopped. stopped. And Willis stopped his own momentum instead of powering through. Now, if that were Presley, that's the first down. Probably it is because he doesn't stop. He puts the head down, and there's a, a big collision and maybe a first down. But nevertheless, Sloven in the punt again. Michael Reed hustling back to receive for Rutgers. Sloven spiraling here. Reed on the run. But from behind. But he breaks some tackles and gets out to the 34-yard line. A 35-yard punt return of 12 yards. Now the defense is doing a good job for both clubs in a 7-7 ball game. And six minutes remaining from Alumni Stadium here at Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. Dave Sims, Dave Jennings, good to have you with us. We'll return after these messages. It's tough being a fan when your team isn't the home team, especially when I try to find coverage of my favorite team in the local paper. I'm lucky if I can find last week's score. But if you're like me, you'll be happy to know there's one publication that'll make you feel right at home, the Sporting News. 
You'll love the sporting news, no matter what team you love, even if it is the home team. Call this number now and get four issues of the sporting news free. You'll get opinions and analysis, team-by-team -team reports, and coverage of all the college conferences, plus baseball, basketball, and hockey all year long. Call now and you'll get four free issues of the sporting news. If you like them, you'll get 24 more issues at this great TV price. If not, just mark the bill, cancel, and owe nothing. The four issues are yours to keep. So call now for the sporting news, the publication that treats every team like the home team. Call now and you'll get four great issues of the sporting news free. Call 1-800-346-4500 now. Back here at Boston College, 7-7 you know ball game. BC about to take over again. That's Matt Haft, the strong outside linebacker for the Eagles. Talking to Bill Thompson, the outside linebacker coach. Rutgers, Doug Graber's club has had the ball 11 times. They've had to punt eight times. BC from its 34. Six minutes even remaining in this contest. Hartzell, the delay to Green. Sheridan had him, lost him. Up to about the 42, some nifty moves, a quick feat by David Green to elude well, you, Ryan Sheridan. You call a Sheridan right there to make the play, but Green, who is having a very, very good game, a little juke and outside move, he's gone. Now you'll see him right here, Green with a little delay. Sheridan right there, nope. Should have been a tackle for a loss of about two, three yards. Instead, he gets it out to the 41, he gains seven. Credit for eight now, so second and short for BC. Green to the corner, cuts it up, first down, Eagles. Second play in a row, he's made guys miss. Catano was out there, he's number 80. He had him on the cutback, but couldn't make the play. Catano shaking his head. Watch Catano, he's out there for the cutback. Got him sealed in, can't make the play. I mean, give credit to Green, he's making nice plays. Yes, he is. BC has had some long drives. They've dominated at time of possession. 33 minutes prior to this drive, they held the ball. 7-7 ball game. From behind, Green goes down. That time, Sheridan did not let him get away. And if you saw Sheridan before the snap, he moved up and was on the line as the outside backer was able to chase it down from the backside. Sheridan, number 43, right there. He moved up on the screen. Right side, you won't be able to see him, but he moves up, and you'll see after the handoff, he'll come in from the right side of your screen, and here he comes. Nobody to block him, chases him down. Green can't see him. Good play. Lose a yard on that play. Second down and 11. On the 46, Greg Grace in motion. Hartzell, here comes the reverse. Grace got a lot of room. Hartzell throws a block. And a nice gain up to the Rutgers. 46-yard line. Boy, it's good to see the quarterback throwing a block, but Washington did a nice job by making him cut back inside. True reverse here, the handoff, the handoff, and then the change of direction, the reverse. Now watch Harsel number 10, throw a block on Washington, but watch Washington force him back inside. If, if he gets outside... Picks up the first down. Exactly. Picked up eight on that play. Greg Grice, the junior flanker, Several Miami players on this ball club. Brian May, another. It's a big play right here, folks. It sure is. From the Rutgers 46, a third and three. Hartzell going to throw it. Under pressure. Mitchell, Mr. Reliable, first down, Boston College. Down to the 39-yard line. Brian Sheridan covering for Rutgers. You have to know he's the guy that, that Hartzell's going to be looking for. He split out to the right side. And you can't see him here, but he splits out to the right, goes down about six yards. Sheridan's on him. He just plants and goes outside, gets some separation. See about the two-yard separation? That's all you need for a guy like Mitchell. Good pass by Hartzell. First down at the 320 mark. You would think that Rutgers might do what Virginia Tech did and just double them all over, but they haven't. Ten catches for Mitchell, 97 yards. Clock rolling, 313. Justice Smith got the corner, but not for long. Number 45, Keith Price was knocked down and got up and got back into the play. And Laro, the H-back, with a real nice block on Karwaki. Laro, again, he's the H-back we talked about at the top of the show. Very important part of a Dan Henning offense. Clock becoming a factor now at the 248 mark. 
picked up five on that play. Eagles killing the clock as they do so well. Started this drive with six minutes to go. David Gordon's long field goal this season, 37 yards. Hartzell, deep sideline. Watson broken up. Nice play there by number 28. Make that number 22, Michael Roberts covered. Roberts, good coverage on the out move. The ball seemed to take a while to get there. So now another key third down play in the ball. Being at the 34-yard line, not in field goal. Although, Al, it's, it's right in the gray area right now, Dave. Right. So Gordon's long is 37 yards. He missed earlier from 26. He's two for three in that short range. BC, six for 14, third down situation. Pocket 229. Four-man rush underneath. Bryce, knocked down. No first down. Well, you just talked about it a couple seconds ago. You got to know where the first down marker is. Go for it. If the defense is in front of you, well, the quarterback will go to another guy. So now they go for it. Now they're going to call a timeout. Henning will call a timeout. He brought his big people on the field. They were going to go for it, but they will call a timeout and talk about it. Timeout, Boston Bring College. The fourth and about their second two. Timeout. And not too much time remaining. 2.07 to go. If they were to kick a field goal from there, that's a 47-yarder. 47-yarder, which I think Gordon has a leg for, but I think that oh, he's going to talk about it. Tell you what, Beckley, on that kickoff after the 15-yard penalty when he kicked it out of the end zone yeah. from his own, what, 20-yard line. line. You may want to go with Beckley. An interesting uh, situation here. What do you look for if you're on the well, Rutgers let, side of things? Well, you, 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 have to keep, you have to keep an eye on Mitchell. It's fourth down and two. Mitchell's caught 10 balls for yeah. 97 yards. The other thing you can do, you can load it up, which they like to do. They bring in number 65, Josh Porter, make him a tight end. They also bring in Scott Dragos, make him a, a blocking tight end, put Laro up on the line and just blast it. Yeah. Remember down on the goal line, though, they went with a play action. So they got a lot of things in their arsenal they could use right now. Mitchell having the big game. And him talking about it. Here are the numbers to this point as we recap our contest. Lucas, those numbers have come up dramatically in the second half. And a big play, the touchdown flip to Marco Battaglia and Hartzell. Very impressive today. And the total yards, no contest there. But a 7-7 ball game nonetheless. Dave Sims and Dave Jennings with you. I want to thank our spotter, Eric Posman, and our make that our spotter, Don Camacho. And Eric Posman, the E-man on the stats. And they didn't bring in their big people. You can It's their normal offensive set here with the two tight ends on the right side. Fourth and two, big play. 7-7 seven, seven ball game, 2.07 to go. Marshall's going to throw. Mitchell, first down, Boston College, triple team, and he beat it. That's just a great play by Mitchell, a beautiful pass by Hartzell. Clock is at 2.01. They'll restart it when the ball is set, but nice grab by Mitchell. You have to keep an eye on this guy because he's the go-to guy without question. And, and I would think now in this last two minutes, again, right side of your screen where the two tight ends were, just drops back. He's going to get pressure, throws it. Just a nice grab. Too much cushion. First down, Boston College. Clock inside a minute. 45, Hartzell under pressure, a throwback, and nobody home. He was throwing back in the vicinity of Greg Rice, who was in the end zone, and the, the crowd saw it on this near side of the field. Of course, when you get a little pressure on Hartzell, forces him to have to, have to throw it inaccurately. I think the crowd was holding their breath, or he's going to come out to his right. Meanwhile, Grice is going to make his way over to the left side, but because of the pressure, he has to throw it early. And the other reason they held their breath, Keith Price was closest. Keith Price is a quarterback for Rutgers. 11th play of this drive. Mitchell, 11 catches, 101. His yardage to this point. Draw, you hear the call. Green breaks it, though. Oh, he got hit in the back. Down at the 20-yard line. It was Keith Price who hit him. Sure was. He was in a vulnerable position, and Green gets up. No worse for wear. Ryan Sheridan involved. As we mentioned, David Gordon's field goal long in the season is a 37-yarder. And you almost have to start thinking about Rutgers if they get down closer and start calling their own timeouts. You bet. They don't want to run the clock out and have no timeout if time left if BC goes ahead. 
from the 20 yard line. Third down and a four. Hartzler over the middle. Watson down to the 11 yard line. First down, Boston College. Beat Price inside, ran out of a shoe to get there. You see him pick it up and put it back on. 54 seconds left, the clock is stopped while I reset the chain. But again, left side, Watson just running a quick in, beat Price, good pass by Hartzell. Here it is, and he runs out of a shoe. Hartzell is shredding Rutgers defense. 50 in, seconds. In Yana Watson, eight catches, 73 yards. At the 11, first and 10. Rutgers needs a turnover, three up the middle to about the nine. Now Rutgers may call a timeout. John Giddings deliver the blow to David Green, who's injured. Took a heck of a pop, and he's hurting. Timeout, Rutgers, the second timeout. See, they're calling one time. time. One timeout remaining for both clubs. Yeah, they're calling timeouts because it appears on that play that maybe Boston College is setting up for the winning field goal. You're just running the ball, a safe play. Don't turn over the ball. You've got Gordon, a good kicker. Don't know where he got hurt. He's got his bell ring. The lower bell, I believe. So 35 seconds. Oh, this would be a this is a game that you don't want to lose. Sure enough, 35 seconds to go. BC's held the ball for almost 40 minutes. 7-7 ball game. We'll be back after these messages. Add Ethel and the whole family are visiting, and you get to play tour guide. Uh-oh, your car's in the shop again, and you need wheels. Headed for a wacky weekend somewhere? Whatever your needs, Budget has the car you need. Budget, a smart place to start. On the road or at home, Budget has you covered. The smart money is on Budget. It's been the most rewarding experience of my life. Yeah, I've learned so much in the past year and a half here in terms of leadership and making decisions. And no matter what you're involved in at BC, I think that, that people find that they really do have a place here. And I think that Boston College has given me a lot. Ever to excel, you know, that's our motto. Boston College, a university for the 1990s in the timeless Jesuit tradition. in the Caribbean, everything we do. U.S. Air begins with you. 35 seconds to go, and B.C. threatening to take the lead and put this game away. And I would think that, D that Dan Henning would call a run to the right side right here to set up the field goal, put the ball right in the middle of the field, force Rutgers to call that last timeout, kick the field goal, give Rutgers the ball back with about 25 seconds to go. Gordon has already missed the 26-yard field goal. Right now, BC in great shape. Those numbers are amazing. This should be for the winning drive. They're going to throw it on a rollout. Hartzell throws incomplete to Grace, covered by Catano at the two-yard line. Now, I'm a little surprised because, of course, this that was a second down play. So this will make it third down. Now, I'm sorry, I thought it was third down. My fault, folks. Now I would think they'll run it back to the middle of the field. Again, you've got a left-footed kicker, and a left-footed kicker, left hash, is a more difficult kick to make, especially in college with the wider hash marks and closer in. Gordon getting a lot of time to think about it. 15th play of this drive. BC started at its own 34 with six minutes to go. 30 seconds to go now in a 7-7 ball game. Indeed to the middle. Green. Green lost it. Oh, look at this. They can pick it up. Where's the ball? Rutgers has got it. Unbelievable. Oh, brother. Are you kidding me? Wow. And now if you're Rutgers, what do you do? 22 seconds do you... That's unbelievable. They set up the winning field goal by running a nice, safe play to your right. You got to tell your ball carrier, just put your, both your hands on the ball. Just get to the middle and fall down. 
No, he's only he got didn't. one hand on it. Look, he's only got one hand on the ball, and it gets pulled free. Strip drill, basic, and a nice play by Rutgers. You and look who look who's there. Sneathen is there, and he jumps on the ball wisely instead of trying to pick it up. Smart play by Sneathen. Now, just put two hands on the ball, and Catano is the one who came over and stripped him, and look at Sneathan wisely jumping on the ball. And it looks like Rutgers may try to do something. Sideline complete, Mataglia goes out of bounds. Wise move at about the 21-yard line with 17 seconds to go. This crowd is stunned. To say the least. A lot of them are leaving the stadium. And how about this, Dave Jennings? They held the ball for five minutes and 38 seconds for a game total of 39 21, and it's a 7-7 ball game. Of course, this game isn't over. Can you imagine if Lucas throws an interception here? Boy, oh boy. You've got to go downfield. The stuff to the side is not going to work. You've only got 17 seconds left. Timeout a piece for both clubs. Lucas steps up. He needs to throw it. Running ain't going to get it done. And he runs out of bounds after 30. Tries to pick up a few more, and they give it to him. Now it's time Eight really seconds. for the Hail Mary. You bet. Lucas, oh, boy. Amazing. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Well, a clock operator, please put nine seconds. So they caught one more, one, they caught one more second. And David Gordon had so much time to contemplate what he would do and how he was going to kick the game-winning field goal. Will not get an opportunity you have today. Two scenarios here: hail mary here, or try and get about a 30-yard gain to about the 30-yard line and kick the field goal. You have time to run two plays. So do you try to want run one for the field goal setup? Improbable, I know, but strange things have happened here today. Indeed. Here we go. They have three receivers. Bottom of your screen. It throws short to Vitagla. He's not going to have time to get out of bounds. Five, four, three. Gets out of bounds at the 42-yard line with two seconds to go. And that's good enough for first down, but that's in the who cares category now. And now Doug Graber, as you can see, he's going to call a timeout. I mean, what do you say here? 75-yard field goal? <laughs> well, a clock operator. Please put three seconds on the clock. Oh, boy, that's a popular move in Boston. I mean, it's, it doesn't matter now. Three or yeah. two, you can only run yeah. one play. Well, uh, we're looking at the first tie in this series, barring a miracle. Can you imagine if Rutgers had gone for the two points on yep. that last touchdown? Oh, man. I thought about it. Yeah, so did I. I mentioned that when they were driving down. They're going for the lead or the, the tie or the lead. Rutgers. However, if they had the last missed timeout. it. Oh! They would be down. But nevertheless, 7-7 seven, seven tie. Now, one thing you can look for here, too, if you don't have the Hail Mary, you can have the, you know, the hook and lateral. Mm -hmm. You can have the rugby type of play where you just throw the ball around. So, might be one quick play. It could be one long play. Rutgers has not had a tie ball game since the 89 season. They tied the first two games of that campaign, 17 all with Cincinnati and 31 all with Ball State. The official standing on, sitting, uh, kneeling, hand on ball. He doesn't want that ball to move. I guess they're going to measure for the first down like it matters here. <laughs> this is remarkable. Talk about first down. Talk about a gimme situation for the game-winning field goal. And this crowd here on family day is stunned. Boy. Again, going back to that fumble, in that situation, you have to put two hands on the ball. Unreal. And when you you don't need the yardage, you need the position, so just a bad play. Yeah, there's no reason to try to be a hero, the kicker. That's why you have him, and David Gordon never got a chance. Last time Boston College in a tie ball game, they tied West Virginia 24-all back in October 3rd of 1992. We think this is the last play, folks. Yeah, we, that's the one lesson we learned last week. Yeah. It ain't over. Three receivers to the top. Now, again, Thunderbird, Gibbs, and Harper. Mamula is going to throw it up in the air. Up for grabs. Let's see. Tip ball picked off by number 49, Terrence Wiggins, and that will do it. A tie ball game. Rutgers and Boston College. Boston College, a almost a two-touchdown favorite in this game. And both teams come out with a distasteful 7-7 tie. I said a few seconds ago, a game you hate to lose, but even worse, a game you hate to tie. Man.
talking about this one for a little while. You got that right. That's why they say that's why we play the game. That's the conclusion of our contest. 7-7, seven, seven, Rutgers and Boston College. Our post-game show follows after these words from our local stations. A lot of little touches go into every new Plymouth Neon. A very powerful 132 horsepower engine, a spacious cab forward interior, and a special chip resistant finish. And oh, one more thing, dual airbag protection. So it always practices safe driving. Say hello to Plymouth Neon at your Chrysler Plymouth dealer. something I've been meaning for you to try. Oh, yeah? Coors Extra Gold. Slow roasted malt gives it its rich dark color. And its rich dark color gives it its name. Extra gold, huh? I had no idea this stuff was this good. Slow brewed Coors Extra Gold. Surprising one beer drinker at a time. I am bored today. I am filled with boredom. The bourgeois businessmen waiting for their packages. They can wait. Does your shipping company hire someone else to deliver your package overseas? Why take the chance? Especially when there's a company that uses its own delivery people in more countries around the world. DHL, or else. It has an abundant number of safety components including dual airbags with terminals plated in gold to protect against corrosion, steel guard beams in all four doors, and crumple zones built into its structure. In an image-is-everything world, we proudly present the substance-is-everything car. Introducing the new Maxima from Nissan. Here, there, everywhere. Eyewitness News. Welcome to our post game show, everybody. Final score, the Rutgers and Boston College tie at 7-7. Our final score from Alumni Stadium. Our Molson Ice player of the game, an easy selection, Pete Mitchell. The tight end for Boston College. What a day. 11 catches, 101 yards, and his fourth career 100-yard game. And the other big note, he becomes the all-time reception leader here at Boston College. But right now, Pete would give anything to take maybe five or six of those babies off that maybe have had one coast-to-coast -coast job for six points. Dave Sims along with Dave Jennings. We're as stunned and surprised as you are. This was amazing. I'm still shaking my head. The fans here are stunned. You got a lot of people in the stadium here standing up wondering what's going on. Boston College played it right. They set up the winning field goal, but they forgot to hold on to the football. David Green right now, you couldn't trade with him for a gazillion dollars. He fumbled as he was trying to set up what would have been the game-winning field goal, and it would have been a chip shot for David Gordon. That, that's why you don't have to be concerned about getting yardage. You'd be concerned about holding on to the football and putting it right in the middle of the field. Now, they call the correct play left hash. They want to get it over in the right side. They give it to Green. Now, watch. He's only holding on with one hand. Where's the left hand? Left hand should be on the ball. See Catano just strip it nicely and then the key play Sneathan does a great job coming up doesn't try to pick it up he just gets on it right try to pick it up just get on it and he's got possession to ensure that Boston College does not get it and then attempt the uh, game winning field goal you know what interests me if Sneathan Sneathan did not have a bad elbow might he have tried to pick it up and go with it? well I would hope not in that in that situation you can't lose if you right. have the ball and that's something you see a lot of defensive players try to do. They try to become heroes. They try to pick it up. They don't get it. And the other team, in this case, Boston College, might recover and kick the winning field goal. But Sneathan doing a good job. When you see the score, you know the score is 7-7. When you look at the numbers, it's hard to believe. Rutgers had the ball for 20 minutes and 39 seconds. <laughs> Ergo, BC. And there's a down on his luck BC fan. BC had the ball for 39 minutes and 21 seconds. You know what he's waiting for? Overtime. He's waiting for him to come back out. He's... <laughs> 
He's got to tell him, hey, my man, we're not at Foxborough. There is no OT. Exactly. Just remarkable. So Boston College record now, 2-1-1 one one in the Big East Conference, 3-2-1 overall. Rutgers goes to 1-2-1 one, and 4-3-1 one, and and one overall. And Miami's in the process of beating West Virginia. We'll update you on those scores. Syracuse has Temple later on this afternoon, so BC doesn't get a chance to move up in the standings. And you can imagine being in either locker room right now. Normally at the end of a ball game, one team is happy, one team is sad. Both teams in there shaking their heads right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. Right? Just looking at each other. What happened? What happened, exactly. <laughs> Why didn't we get it done? We had opportunities. Ray Lucas came to life in the second half. He went to Marco Battaglia, which was a smart move because Battaglia, like Mitchell, if you get it near him, he's going to catch it. Lucas finished up with 13 for 23 completions uh, on the afternoon. Most of that in the second half. Now, remaining schedules for both clubs. We start with Boston College. They're at Army. That Louisville game is a Thursday night game on ESPN. Huge game against Syracuse. We'll be back here for that one. And then West Virginia and Miami to close things notice, out. Notice down the road, four games out of five. Meaning, Meanwhile, Rutgers has uh, Temple at home, and then they're on the road for Virginia Tech and Pittsburgh. So an opportunity for both clubs to uh, really move up in the standings and, and make a little bit more of a traffic jam atop the Big East with Syracuse, Miami, and Virginia Tech. But we're left with a 7-7 tie here at Alumni Stadium. Our post-game show will continue after these words from our local stations. I need a place where I can become civilized. And nobody can touch me. When I'm in a Lincoln 